So we've got them cars coming up to uh, the final corner of the lap, which is Lodge. It is on pole position then. Uh, Carl Swift starting the set. Next to him is Alan Henderson, very experienced racer in the number 90 uh, Lotus uh, Elise S2. Alongside him, but the lights go out, the race gets underway, and it's Carl Swift that goes into an early lead, followed by the number 69 car in second place. That's Andy Schultz in the BMW. We can't quite, though, get ahead of the, uh, of the Lotus on the exit of the corner, but this big field of cars that are still coming out of Deer Leap are well strung out. But it is a change for second place there. Andy Schultz has made it through as they head down towards Cascades, but it's Carl Swift in the uh, very successful Seat Leon Euro Cup car that leads the way. Yeah, Carl had a nasty accident here in TCR UK a couple of years ago at this very corner, which I'm sure he uh, still has memories of every time he heads into the quick left-hander in Ireland, but he safely negotiates it this time. The battle on for second place as Alan Henderson tries to reclaim P2 from the BMW of Andy Schultz. Very experienced GT racer is uh, Andy. No surprise to see him towards the sharp end of the grid. And then Aid Wooden and Matt Wallace in their pair of uh, Seats are not far behind. Either a clean start, Ian, which is always good to see. It's a narrow circuit, this. Mm. And with 40 cars near enough heading through that first sequence of corners, it wouldn't have been a huge surprise to see a couple of them coming together. Uh, it would not. And uh, as we were saying, you can't really win a race on the first corner, but you can lose it. And uh, everyone seems to have got safely through Ooh. there. One on the grass, though. One on the kerb, two of them as a result of all of that on the grass going through the second part of Nick of Chicane. It's two of the Sayat Layons as well. I think one of those is the 10 car of Matthew and Simon Wallace trying to work out was the, who the other one was. They got him, I think. Yeah, it was, oh. I think. Off, off into the barriers there goes number 48. That is the uh, Mark Jones car that's gone off. Mark Jones starting that car. Will Robert Taylor be able to get out into the race? It only really nosed gently into the barriers, didn't it? Yeah, and they're quite strong at the front end, those cars. They are touring cars, essentially so they should have uh, enough structural rigidity to uh, to carry on without too much damage. That uh, moment between the two uh, Seat Leons down at the chicane was interesting, wasn't it? And here's another interesting one. That's the uh, 235 BMW up the inside. That's Charlie Dark trying to pass Steve Cheatham. These are the uh, uh, two drivers who are both doing the entire two hours on their own. And right behind them in the uh, Honda Civic, I want to say that's Martin James. I think it is, isn't it? The treble three car who's made a few places. BMW and Porsche still side by side through Old Hall Corner. But Steve Cheatham, an experienced Porsche Boxster racer, carries the speed off the turn and hangs on to sixth place. Yeah, of course, Steve was the champion last year, then in Class B, but the car operated uh, to go up into Class A this year. And the classes, by the way, are differentiated on power to weight ratio. So the splits are up to 300 brake horsepower per ton for Class A, 240 for Class B and 180 for Class C. And there's a roughly even number of cars in each class, which is great to see. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So close competition throughout, I'm sure. The uh, Seat battle still raging on uh, with Matt Wallace having rather clumsily overtaken Aid Wooden down at the chicane last time around. He did hang on to the place, but Aid Wooden, who uh, in the 66 car out qualified the number 10 machine, looking to try and uh, get back through the area motorsport Civic we can see on the stream heading into the uh, Britain chicane, hopping and skipping over the kerbs. Great mix here of front wheel drive cars, rear wheel drive car, uh, front engine, mid engine cars as well. We get the odd rear engine Porsche racing with us as well. And all of these different cars have different areas of the circuit at which they excel and other areas where maybe they're a little bit weaker and that's all part of what generates this really interesting racing. There aren't that many championships in the country where you can see 
a Honda Civic racing a BMW and a Porsche Boxster, and they're all so evenly matched. No, it's absolutely fantastic, the, the wide variety of machinery we've got. I and mean, you can sort of see the car choice is evolving. I think people realise might what, might what might be the car to have. So there's a few more say lay-ons than we've had in previous seasons, for example. We've got a few Golfs on the grid as well. I think they've swelled in number as well uh, since last year. But the Honda Civic Type R, of course, is a, a good, strong car to have as well. And there's a few of those talking of Golfs. There's one of them now. Uh, that's the 27 car being started by Mark Rice, former Honda uh, Civic racer. He'll hand over to Will Beach uh, a little bit later on. Beach, a non-finisher in the opening round of the championship at Silverstone. And that is the 21 car uh, in Class A, which is the uh, Adam Howarth BMW E36 M3 that we briefly saw running in 13th position, just behind uh, number 15, which is Colin Gillespie, who had the Class B win last time out at Silverstone. Yep, this is the fight for 11th place overall. BMWs, both of them, but as you said, different classes. The Class B1 series ahead of the... Uh, three series uh, in Class A and they drop down into Cascades very close together indeed and it looks as though this time Adam Howarth has the better exit from Cascades corner and Nose is alongside and then with superior horsepower is able to drag uh, the Class A car ahead of the Class B runner. Early class leaders by the way while the top what eight cars at the end of lap number two were all Class A so it is uh, Carl Swift in the Seat that leads in Class A. Class B being led by the ninth place car at the moment number 27 Mark Grice's uh, Volkswagen Golf and in Class C, it looks as though it's the Kells, isn't it? So it's uh, James and his father, Darren, in the number 68 MX-5 who are leading the way, and it's father, Darren, who takes the first stint. Yep, so only five minutes gone, 115 minutes to go. It's a long, old race, this, the Tequila Club and Jura race. We had the 100-minute uh, race at Silverstone for the opening round of the championship, and the race distances do vary as the season goes on. There's a few more races still to go uh, during the course of the year as well, uh, as you would expect. Although, of course, the season has, like most other things in life, been curtailed a little bit by COVID-19 this year. But still plenty of opportunity for this very popular uh, championship to, 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 to appear. And I actually think we've even got even more cars on the grid this weekend here at Alton than we did at Silverstone a couple of weeks ago, which is quite unusual. Usually you'd expect that to be the other way around. But, uh, but great to have quality entry here at Tawson Park this weekend. Uh, isn't it just? And uh, some nice close battles uh, coming through past us, but lots uh, throughout the order as well. One car that is making good progress, I noticed. I just had a quick look on the timing screen. It's the number 22 BMW. We haven't seen it yet on screen, but that's the car being shared by Luke Browse and Paul Browse. Paul, I believe, is Luke's father. Uh, Luke Browse, uh, BMW one make series competitor usually, but they only got one lap in in qualifying, and that is a Class A uh, E46 M3 BMW GTR. It's a proper bit of kit, uh, and they've already gained about 12 places from where they started so we'll uh, if we can pick that car up for you we will it's just coming across the start finish line actually it's in that next group of cars at the top of your shot so uh, Luke Browse uh, is on the verge now of getting into the top 20 very quick racer is Luke getting some tuition from former TCR UK front runner um, uh, Ollie uh, Taylor uh, over recent years and it's doing him well he's uh, racing nicely through the pack car on screen there at the moment is the 176 car which is being driven by Matthew Pickford at the moment that is the Lotus Exige but it's being tended and co-driven by uh, Brian Chandler and he is uh, a, a former uh, Five Club Racing MX-5 Cup champion as well uh, within the 750 Motor Club so uh, best known for racing MX-5s and with some success as well but also preparing cars in the MX-5s, but various other championships as well now. Uh, talking of MX-5s, there's an interesting one to talk about, Andy. Uh, yeah, this is the number one car, which is the Ben Hansi and Ben Short-driven car. Now, we're more used to seeing those two going wheel-to-wheel -wheel against each other in competition in uh, Master MX-5 Championship Racing, but they've teamed together here at Alton Park, and they're overtaking a rather slow Porsche there, dropping into the Hislop chicane, the orange and black machine. Was that 20? Five possibly, uh, yeah, yeah the Cayman Ball. wasn't it? Yeah, of Darren Ball, you're quite yeah. right. So uh, that car in strife, but uh, yeah, good to see those two working together. They're very, very quick drivers, the pair of them. So no surprise to see that car uh, doing a bit of giant killing this afternoon. No, not at all. Uh, absolutely right. Uh, and a bit more on that as we go through. So here's uh, Sayat sandwiching the uh, very smart-looking uh, two-three-five car of. Uh, of uh, Charlie Dark, uh, the BMW. We've got the, actually, we've got the Honda in there as Ooh. well, haven't we? Yep. Dear, so sorry, I was ju jumping up in the air there because there was, they were very sideways for Charlie to hop there as he it tried was. to go up the inside. I think he made that stick though, uh, going into Cascade, so a place gain there. Pick up on that. There's a BMW going slow though. That looks like the 101 car, isn't it? Yes, it is. So that's uh, Carlo Turner in the. Uh, 
BMW 130i that's going slowly. Nick Grove, who should be the second driver there. And uh, Darren Ball, as we thought, is into the pit lane as well. He was the Porsche Cayman that was going slowly uh, a moment ago. And uh, also in, I notice out of the window, is Mark Jones yeah. in that say that had the spin on lap one. And I think they're going to be joined, yes they are, by the 101 car as well. So three cars in early strife making unscheduled stops. Of course, they could turn these into their... Uh, they're scheduled to stop as well, if you like. They Every dri driver, every team has to make a stop of 3 minutes and 30 seconds during the course of this race. They can do it whenever they like, though. Um, so it's possible, if they've got the fuel tank that will support it, that they could um, could turn this into a mandatory stop. But I, I would doubt whether that will work out at this stage of the race. Uh, any stop where fuel is put on has to be 3 minutes 30 seconds. Oh, and there's a car that spun there in a very odd place on the exit of Shallow's Corner. Uh, just caught a flash of it on the screen, but I didn't see who it was. It was blue car. Try and work out who that was. That's a very odd place to have a spin, really. Uh, there we are. Can we see who that is? It is the 22, 22 car. Oh, dear. So that's uh, what you are talking about, <laughs> uh, the Browns, weren't you? Uh, yes, they probably wish I hadn't now. That car had. Uh, had it got into the top 20 yet? No, not quite, but it wasn't that far away. And uh, Luke has had a bit of a spin coming out of the shell hairpin. Now, he's done a bit of damage to the splitter. Look, the front left corner is a little deranged because, of course, it's a banked corner shell. Mm. So once you uh, fall off the inside of the road, which, as you say, is a rare place to end up, uh, but it's quite easy to bottom out the front splitter and do some damage and that car does rely quite heavily on the uh, aerodynamics to, to generate front and rear downfall so uh, that is not going to help their speed in the long run absolutely and green flags at the exit of cascades as well oh, oh i'm afraid there's a car on the roof and that's number 66 that has gone over and that is the aid wooten say at leon euro cup car it is not the right way up i'm afraid and uh, well, i think that's clearly going to lead to some kind of intervention um, but we can see that car on its roof we don't quite know how it got there though andy no i think it's in the gravel so it's not uncommon to see cars go in sideways there and just dig in so uh, it may hopefully not be that significant an incident and into the pits is number 15 colin gillespie as well you can see there and he was the class b winner last time out so that's early drama for Colin Gillespie, for him to be into the pit lane already, where was he running? He was 12th, I think, when he came into the uh, into the pit lane. They do know this race is two hours, don't they? Not 20 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> they do. And we've got safety car boards out now as well, Andy, which is no surprise given what we've just seen on our on our screens here. Um, but it does mean that those who think they have got the fuel to go for 109 minutes, <laughs> it's a long shot, uh, might be able to uh, head for the pit lane now. Um, certainly. Some of them will be able to go for, for longer than others, and uh, there are now some cars already heading into the pit lane, I can see, so we need to start making a note of this. One of, the, that's not, one of those is Ivan Mayers, I can see. He's into the pits, and the second of those cars is Alan Henderson, I think, isn't it? Who was yeah. from second place, number 90. So an early start for him. I wonder if this could prove either genius or um, disastrous. Well, in a way, it's a free pit stop, I suppose. Even if they need a splash and dash at the end mm. of the race, it may prove better to take advantage of the safety car. You say that, but any, uh, anything is going to take uh, ah. three, 30, 3 minutes 30 seconds if you, have a, uh, if you have a refueling stop. And the red flags are now out, and we can see that we've got uh, medical vehicles and fire trucks and so forth heading out onto the circuit, which... Uh, Given the incident we just saw is not a complete surprise. So red flags being flown, the race being stopped. So everything we're talking about safety cars is now irrelevant. Um, we will hopefully get a, a restart for this race. Um, but uh, obviously there is a, an incident, a car and a driver to be dealt with. It looks like the driver's out of the car, which is great news. Uh, Aid Wooten uh, helped from that inverted position uh, and he uh, looks to be okay. We certainly wish him well. Um, but uh, there is, it's obviously quite difficult to rescue that car f in its current situation um, without getting it back onto its wheels first. And I just think you probably can't do that safely under a safety car. I guess that is the conclusion that has been reached. So we will go again um, and uh, we will see what happens in terms of uh, how that will work. It will be a restarted race. Um, it will be from the order in which they were when the red flags um, went out, rolled back a lap, um, so it'll be a, a new grid and it'll be a separate race. It won't be the two sets of times added together, it'll be a new race, but presumably over a shortened distance we'd had about 11 minutes or so of the race when the red flags, flags came out. So quite unusually in, the, in an endurance race, Andy, um, 
red flags out and race being stopped. Uh, yes, and the significant thing there is you say that the result will go back a lap to to uh, figure out the grid for the restart. Well, Alan Henderson, who had just pitted, mm. had also just got ahead of Andy Schultz back into second uh -huh. place, but I don't know when he did it. I, I noticed as the red flag came out that he was showing a second on the timing screen, so it may well be that Henderson gets his front row starting position back, or it may be that Schultz benefits in a way from this red flag. Yeah, so we'll see, uh, we'll see how that all pans out. There'll be a lot of work done in the timekeeper's office to uh, get all of that sorted, and they will be also uh, then getting grids printed off and uh, passed down to the start line officials so they can get the cars grid up in the right order. At the moment, you can see they're being held single file because they'll be all in completely the wrong order. That's the one thing you can be certain of. They'll be in completely the wrong order at the moment and uh, and they'll need to shuffle them back into the, to the right order. And that would be not, not be the work of a moment, but I'm sure as soon as the grid is uh, available to them, they will uh, get them back into line. Uh, a reminder then that um, if you are watching whether at home or here at the circuit you can obtain a copy of the race program in digital format to do that go to 750mc.co.uk and on the scrolling banner across the top one of the options on the the, the, uh, the different uh, screens there is to download the race day program so have a look at that and it's got all the information about all the cars and the drivers all the different championships on the show today uh, and uh, lots of other information as well. So well worth downloading that. It's free of charge and uh, it's just like the normal race day program, but because of the COVID-19 uh, restrictions at the moment, we can't give it you in a uh, printed form, but we can give it you in a digital form. So do have a look at that. Uh, and you can also, when there's some live timing to see, again, from the 750 Motor Club website, uh, get a link to uh, the live timing page, which is provided by the results live. Now the sale has been righted, um, it's a little bit squashed uh, on the front and on the windscreen uh, section, uh, so there'll be some, some work to do to get that car back out again, but the roll cage, Andy, looks to have done its job. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Driver got straight out once he was uh, uh, safe to do so, which is uh, which is good to see. And uh, as I said, it, it, it maybe is one of those that looked a bit worse than it was, but uh, Cascade is not a nice place to find yourself heading off the road. It's a fast approach there, and uh, yeah, once the car gets sideways into the gravel, quite easy for it to uh, tip over. Now, we've got a number of cars in the pit lane, and one car that we just saw pulling up at the front of the queue there is Mark Grice, who was in the, I seem to recall, class leading VW Golf in class B. Now, he was lined up on the grid and has just driven the wrong way up the pit straight to get into the pit lane. So I actually think there might be a drama there. They're look yes, they're pulling away bodywork mm. at the front of the car, so he may be leading his class, but... Uh, I think uh, after quite a gentlemanly start to the race where everyone was very much minding their P's and Q's, things maybe started to get a bit uh, a bit more robust after that. Yeah, absolutely right. So uh, a bit of work to be done, a bit of uh, TLC required on some of the uh, on some of the cars. And we'd already got about four or five cars in the pit lane even before that happened. So it was already proving to be a, a bit of a race of attrition. Um, but that's the nature of endurance racing, isn't it? Uh, and although it's not like a 24-hour race where you perhaps can come back from pits, so it's probably a bit more difficult to do so unless it's a very, very brief one or, or your car's much faster than everybody else's. But uh, you can certainly make some progress up the order, especially given the multi-class nature mm. of Club Enduro. Uh, well, exactly. And even if you can't necessarily fight back to a class win, if you can still score some points within your class, that could prove crucial. You score points within your own class. So it's not the overall result that uh, defines the championship standings. It's wherever you are within either class A, B or C. And so if you can salvage a top five or six or something in class, score a couple of points, that could prove crucial uh, come the end of the year. It is just a five-race calendar this year for the Tegiwa Club Enduro Championship uh, as a result of the slightly uh, delayed start to the season. And so uh, every race is going to matter. And if you can... Uh, in true endurance racing fashion, pull yourself back out of that hole and, and score a few points. That uh, that could come in very handy at the end of the year. As I said, you score points within your class. So it's the three class winners from last time at Silverstone that lead the way. Rob Baker and Carl Swift in their uh, Seat Cooper who were leading the way before the red flag. They won in uh, Class A. Class B was won by Colin Gillespie last time out, where we saw that he possibly had some dramas earlier on. Uh, and Andy Bailey uh, in the 95 car, who I'm guessing was on his own at uh, Silverstone in a different mm. car, clearly, uh, was in uh, Class C. And uh, Andy Bailey, who usually would uh, partner Andy Schultz in various GT3 machinery. And uh, this time around, Andy in the Class A BMW, and uh, last time at Silverstone, sorry, 
uh, Andy Schultz in the uh, Class A BMW. And last time at Silverstone, it was Andy Bailey who took Class C honours. So those three class winners are all joint championship leaders coming to Alton Park. Tractor has just uh, left the, uh, the paddock. Uh, no doubt that's probably got some sweeping up or repair work to do down at the scene of that incident down at uh, down at Cascades. So we, we didn't see the incident. Uh, I can see that on the comments on our, on the YouTube, on the live stream, someone said that it happened uh, right in front of them, but he wasn't sure what happened. He imagines it was a typical Denton squeeze. He said, but it was huge, he confirms. Uh, one of our viewers down there. And don't forget, if you are at the circuit, you are able to tune in to the live stream as well. 750mc.co.uk slash live. Um, so if you're not already tuned into that, you'll be able to watch uh, all the racing as it happens uh, online. And you can do that wherever you are in the world. And uh, no doubt we've got uh, viewers across the globe. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, sounds like maybe the, the Armco barrier then needs a bit of uh, repair work maybe. down at uh, Cascades, which is quite common here. So the uh, marshals and the circuit workers will be familiar with uh, how to get that done as quickly as possible. On the Civic, they're being wheeled into the garage, which is slightly concerning for Martin James, the uh, uh, area motorsport run Honda Civic. Everyone else sort of just sitting and waiting. And of course, for a couple of the cars that were in the pits with problems or damage before the red flag, this is now free time that they can uh, continue to try and diagnose and solve the problems. For example, the uh, 48 Seat and Mark Jones that, uh, that nosed into the barriers on the opening lap, they're still working away on the front of that car. And whereas had the race still been running, they'd be losing lap after lap after lap. Right now, they're actually able to repair the car and maybe get it going again for the restart without losing too much time. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, I see some drivers doing warming up exercises there <laughs> as well. S somewhat like, yeah, it's got, it's got star jumps going on. Get an exercise uh, routine going maybe down there in the pit lane. <laughs> tiring me out just watching them, I have to say. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, the, uh, the cars are on the move again, as you can see. So uh, hopefully that is a sign that they're going to start regridding. Uh, before too much longer. I'm not quite sure how these cars that are in the pit lane are going to get back round to the... Oh, they're being released onto the track, actually. So yeah. they're doing a, an outlap, essentially, from the pit lane, which is why we're seeing some more signs of life from the uh, the, the uh, pits then. The car being pulled in by the Land Rover as oh. well into the pit lane, which you can't quite see on the screen yet. But there it is. It's just coming into shot now. Um, hello. I've dropped my pen. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, the Land Rover is completely obscuring the number of that car. Let's see if we can work that one out. Ah, 16. 16, so that is... Phil Driver. Phil Driver, yeah. So he's on the end of a tow rope, so it looks like possibly he won't be able to restart. I drop with the Land Rover in the pit lane at Brands last weekend, didn't you as well, Andy? I, I wouldn't like to comment here. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully the race not live right now, and uh, we're not in the middle of a live pit stop window. Anyway, we've got uh, that car's being pushed into its garage by the looks of it. And no obvious damage, so no. I'm suspecting that's mechanical rather than, uh, than contact. Yeah, you would think so. So, various work being done. Alan Henderson's car's being pushed backwards. I think that's probably going to be heading back out into uh, the race to take up its good position. Now, if they... I didn't see whether they'd started refueling it before the red flag came out, but if they did get a bit of fuel in, <laughs> presumably they're allowed well, to keep it in there now well, for the restart. Well, well, I would think there would be, but I would think they'd still be required to make a mandatory stop in oh, the yeah. second part of the race. Yes. Although it, it gets interesting, because we're in this position where no one really made their mandatory stop very early into the race. If we got deeper into the race, all bets are off. <laughs> and everyone would have wanted to have done what suited their particular <laughs> circumstance, I guess. Yes, no, thankfully the timing was not... Uh, not uh, able to cause too much confusion on this occasion but uh, uh, yeah, be interesting to see where Henderson ends up, he's a, he's a quick old driver, he's got the current lap record in Class B but of course he's moved up to Class A for this year and was only one one hundredth of a second slower than Carl Swift and Rob Baker and I'm going to presume it was Carl that set the lap time uh, mm -hmm. in the, the pole sitting uh, Seat in qualifying but uh, it sort of tells me that if Henderson can keep Andy Schultz mm. behind him on the restart yep. he could go after the race leader. A a absolutely right, absolutely right. Um, at Silverstone, I mean, Carl Swift, as we say, was in the car for 90% of the race and Rob Baker was only literally in it for about seven minutes once he'd done the... Uh, once they've done the pit stop, but it's Rob's team that runs the car. Carl is the customer, uh, and uh, they're both equally as quick, I think, pretty much, the two drivers there. So uh, they've both been successful. Rob Baker's been a Civic Cup champion. Um, so 
both very quick drivers indeed, not lots to choose between them. Um, whereas probably some, some lineups will have a quicker driver and a, a slower driver and the strategy probably really does matter, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. You want to keep your quick driver in for the longest, uh, ideally. But if we get a safety car, then that kind of changes. You sort of have to dive for the pit lane uh, as soon as the safety car should come out. So uh, well, maybe not early in the race, but if it comes out deeper into the race, that can sometimes uh, uh, skew the, uh, the strategy a little. Mark Jones, his going back out into the race again. That was the car that was in the barriers uh, on lap one of the race. Um, so actually, this has worked out well for them mm. because they presumably have to start at the back but at least they will have lost several laps otherwise, but they'll be able to sort of go, uh, uh, you know, go from the back, pick their way through the field and hopefully get a decent finishing position out of it. And they'll be back on the lead lap, I guess, mm. now. It's a complete yeah. reset, isn't it? So, yeah, um, so yeah they, I mean, they were already two or three laps down, mm. weren't they, before the red flag? Uh, so they have rather got away with it. Yeah, it's the car that qualified eighth as well, so mm. they, they, they should be able to make up a, a, a good chunk of that ground. Marshals, by the looks of it, do now have grid sheets and they are starting to get cars into the right order before we go back for another rolling lap. But it's whereas when they come out of the assembly area, they're already in, hopefully, the right order. Here they're, they're probably in something that's a little bit more random because some of them will have seen the red flag earlier than others, some of them will have changed positions between the lap that the result goes back to and the, the time the red flag went out, so it's just a little bit more difficult to get them all into the right order. So we must bear with the marshals while they uh, get everyone onto the grid where they are supposed to be for a reduced distance race. Hopefully we'll have communication from race control or race admin of what the new race distance is going to be. Um, but because uh, that would be quite important information. <laughs> um, and certainly the drivers and the teams will need to know that as well. Yeah, a big shout out to the marshals as well. It's been a strange old year, and with so many clashes in the calendar these days, it was uh, a lot of people wondering whether we'd be running short on marshals mm. once we did get racing back underway. That's absolutely not been the case. Uh, the uh, marshalling community as eager as ever to get back trackside and help us get the racing season underway. So a huge thank you to all of the Orange Army that are here this weekend, uh, not just at Alton Park, but the various other race meetings going on around the country uh, for their continued support and hard work. It's uh, a tough job being a marshal, mm. a lot harder than many people would think. They all do it on a volunteer basis. They don't get paid. They do it for the love of the sport. Uh, and it's great to see the enthusiasm is still there, even in such uh, strange circumstances as we're, we're in right now. Have you done any marshalling yourself, Andy? I did a training day one yeah. day in the snow here oh. in, in, on a, a dark and cold February day, and I decided it wasn't for me. <laughs> funny <laughs> but, that. Yes, uh, but uh, sadly, there are just too many commentary clashes, you see, oh, otherwise I'd be out be there, there every week. But uh, but uh, I, uh, oh, I, no. I, I've heard that it is tremendous fun. It's a real sort of family that, that they all get to know each other. A lot of them tend to marshal at their local track pretty much every weekend, and uh, uh, they have an awful lot of fun doing so. Okay, well, let's just take a pause from listening to you and I for a moment, Andy. <laughs> not, not that people don't welcome that. And let's have a look at a video. So that's a bit of a look at what the Tegiwa Club Enduro Championship is all about. And if you want to get into racing, in particular endurance racing, it's a, a very good way uh, of doing so with uh, different classes for different budgets and different lengths of races as well. There's a trip to Spa 
um, coming up later. Before then, they go to Snetterton and the championship rounds out in the depths of November at Donington Park. It might be another of those snowy days that you were talking about, <laughs> Andy, by the time that we uh, by the time we get there. I sincerely hope not. We've had <laughs> meetings snowed off at Donington before, so I shouldn't shouldn't joke. Just talk about marshalling. I did do a little bit of marshalling myself, but only sort of um, uh, filling in time really uh, and helping out at events that were very short at Rockingham yeah. uh, which, uh, which which wasn't completely unknown so uh, I, I was at an event at Rockingham I was also at Snetterton it was a British Formula 3 and GT meeting and I was entrusted with the yellow flag on the post just before the whistle came I thought I'm going to have loads of action here <laughs> I've been waving my yellow flag all day uh, but nothing <laughs> No, no one did anything of note at Russell Chicane the whole day on that occasion, which is bizarre. Right, uh, keep talking for a moment, please, Andy. Uh, I can do that, I've been told. Um, yes, the, um, it, it, yeah, the, the, it, it's a tough job being a marshal, but uh, an awful lot of fun, so I've heard. And uh, they are doing a good job now of gridding the cars back up uh, into their correct position. So I think we're only a moment or two away from uh, getting the race restarted. And uh, I can see that Alan Henderson has been placed on... Yes, on the front row of the grid. So Alan Henderson has been able to... Uh, he, he obviously got that second place back away from Andy Schultz a couple of laps before the red flag came out. So he will have another shot at starting from second place, which is where, of course, he took the initial start of the race, uh, but did lose that uh, that second place to the BMW. Just getting confirmation there from, uh, from race admin of the situation. So effectively, the clock now is still ticking um, on this to give our club enduro race. And so it will still finish at the time that it was going to, which we think was around about 3.54, given that we started to think at 1.54 and it was a two-hour race. So we've now got about 90 minutes left to go. Um, all but the last 20 minutes, the cars have been, uh, well, not completely stationary because they've been marshaled into their, their grid positions. And there you can see the clock on screen, 90 minutes to go now. So, um, yeah, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get the uh, rolling lap underway soon and the race back underway. Um, just as soon as possible. Darren Ball, it looks like he's going to make it back out. Is he going to be stopped at the end of the pit lane or is he going to be able to go back out onto the grid? I'm seeing this out of our commentary box window. I think he might have to join at the end of the green flag lap when that gets in the way, Andy. Yeah, there was a marshal uh, stood at the end of the pit lane who was not going to let him through, so he sensibly has stopped and uh, will... Uh, yeah, as you say, join in at the back of the field, and the fact that the time is still ticking means that these those that have had problems in the first part of the race have less time now to uh, to fight back. But uh, yeah, Carl Swift then and Alan Henderson on the front row of the grid, and Alan Henderson I mentioned earlier on is the lap record holder here uh, in Class B at uh, Alton Park. The Class A lap record was a 152.91 set by Andy Marston last year. Well, mm -hmm. already down into the 149s with uh, uh, Carl Swift setting the fastest lap in the first part of the race. Now, I guess that won't officially count now because no. the first part of the race never happened, but uh, the signs are all there that that lap time is going to get beaten again. Yeah, it should do, shouldn't it? Uh, absolutely right. Uh, we've got the one-minute board being shown now. It's just off the edge of your camera shot, but uh, we are going to get the racing back underway very shortly. OK, so a slight change of plan to what we've just told you. Not a big change of plan. It's going to be 90 minutes from now, basically. The green flag has gone out. So 90 minutes from now for the remainder of this Tequiwa Club Enduro race. So they'll complete the rolling lap behind the uh, behind the safety car. Then we'll get back underway. And by that time, there'll be about 87 minutes left to go, we reckon, Andy. Yes, so plenty of time still for uh, things to change. And everyone is now away. And they're at the back of the grid. You can see the uh, number... 48 Mark Jones driven Seat Leon and uh, a little bit of a tank tape special now there's some damage onto the front of the uh, the car and of course Luke Brown's back at the back of the field again now mm. so he can uh, start uh, a charge back through the order potentially yeah absolutely right and hopefully not repeat the off that he had yes. at Shallow's Corner on the exit of Shallow's Corner first time around so uh, clock ticking now from 90 minutes then for this restarted Tequila Club Enduro race um it's really been a great success story um, since it was introduced only a few years ago, really, by the 750 Motor Club. Effectively, initially, it was just like a long road sports race back in 2015. We had a 150-minute race there. Uh, and then it built up to three races in 2016. I think we had five in 2017, including the first trip to Spa. And then it's sort of been a fully-fledged uh, championship of sort of seven or eight meetings since then, not this year. Uh, for the reasons we've just talked about in terms of COVID-19 and the impact that that has had on the racing calendar. 
So they're already down at Britain's, the leaders, but they're behind the McGann, which is being driven by historic racer John O'Banes uh, this weekend. And uh, he is heading off over hill top, so the driver's just weaving around a little bit to try and get some heat into the tyres. They're all on treaded tyres, though. They have to come from list 1A, B or C uh, in the uh, MSUK uh, yearbook. And... Uh, it's all, again another way of keeping the cost relatively under control is Club Enduro. The emphasis on the club, but equally as much the Enduro as well. Fantastic sight and very colourful sight as well, Andy. These cars make as they head down towards uh, his lobster cane. Yeah, I was walking down the pit lane earlier on and, and taking a look into the garages. The cars are all immaculately prepared and uh, uh, lots of uh, sponsorship uh, being brought in by many of the teams and drivers to help them go racing. And uh, yeah, it's a, it is a very good looking grid and, and an eclectic mix of cars as well, as we've been saying earlier on. But uh, uh, yes, the, the, there are so many of them that uh, the early laps tend to be quite frenetic. And we're about to get a, a full restart now as well. So I guess there'll be two by two again for the uh, rolling start. And it will be uh, Carl Swift and Alan Henderson on that front row. And uh, keep an eye on some of the class battles further back as well. Class B is now being led uh, by the 27 car, I believe, of William Beach and uh, Mark Grice. That VW, of course, that had pitted mm -hmm. uh, should hopefully have come back out with the class lead. So safety car is E. And they're looking like they are in single file rather than two by two. But we'll... A bit of a mix, actually. Um, one of them straight into the pits as well, trying to pick up who that is as well. But the lights go out, the race gets back underway then. And it's another good start by Andy Schultz there in the BMW down the inside of Alan Henderson. He tries to go into Old Hall Corner for the first time once again. See if he made it. Stick in a moment or two. As the field quite spread out as they were at the initial start filing through Old Hall Corner for the first time, Andy. It was Charlie Darp that came into the pit lane, so a car that was running inside the top five has uh, pitted the uh, BMW. Uh, the race leaders, by the way, I saw out of the window, it was actually Andy Schultz challenging Carl Swift for the lead as they went into Cascade, so I don't know whether he made that stick. I'm sure we'll pick the leaders up in a moment or two now that the tail of the field has made its way safely through Old Hall Corner, but the BMW had some serious power coming out of Old Hall Corner as we wait to see who comes over hilltop in the race lead. Will it be a Seat? Will it be a BMW? Or will he even be a Lotus of Alan Henderson? We wait with uh, bated breath to find out. But all three of them were under a very, very small blanket heading towards Cascades. Yep, so it should be pretty close, one would think. Here they come, and it is the BMW that's out in front. So that is a change. It's then the 69 car, Andy Schultz then, that leads the way then from Carl Swift in second place, I believe. Yep. Yep, and then in third place, is that the Wallace car? It is, isn't it? Uh, that's the car that was up over the kerb on lap one uh, to his lops in, in the initial start. Uh, he's in third place. And then it's Alan Henderson, fourth. Those four getting away from the rest. Yeah, Henderson got kind of elbowed out onto the kerb coming out of Old Hall. That's why he's dropped off the podium now. So far from having another shot at going after Carl Swift, he's actually got even more work to do now, has uh, Alan. But as we said, a very experienced uh, sports car racer in Maserati X5 is predominantly uh, is still there in fourth place. So the BMW then leads the way of Andy Schultz. He'll hand this over to Matthew Hampson at some point to take over the second stint of the race, but Andy may well be the quicker of the two, so I'd expect him to stay in for a while. Carl Swift likewise perhaps in the set out right behind him as they cross the start-finish line. The gap officially is less than half a second between the top two, uh, with third place for Matt Wallace, who will hand over to his brother Simon at the pit stops. Alan Henderson fourth, and fifth place for the uh, Howarth uh, car, which uh, Adam Howell, who started initially, all the way down in 15th place. Yep, so we made up some progress there to fifth, so that's very good. We can see out of our windows lots of jousting and changing of position, but there is the 316 car, that's Ivor Mayers in the Mazda MX-5. He's been a stalwart supporter of uh, Club Enduro over the past couple of years, also a regular at the Formula Ford Festival as well, uh, down the years, Ivor. Very keen supporter of... Uh, a variety of disciplines of racing, it would seem. He's uh, towards the back of the field, though, on this occasion, it's fair to say. Yeah, Ivan knows this place well, though. He's also, uh, as you said, he races Formula Ford, races in the Northern Formula Ford Championship a lot, which is uh, based here at, uh, at Alton Park. Charlie Dark's BMW, by the way, still in the pit lane with its bonnet up, so that looks like a fairly significant problem. Yeah, you're right. So clearly something they detected on there on the green flag. Like you can see it there on your inset now as well, the picture-in-picture, picture, the Elite Works motorsport car. 
need some elite work on it to get it back out again. But look at the two leaders almost side by side, Andy, as they head up Clay Hill. Yeah, it looks as though Carl Swift is on the attack now. He should be quicker than Andy Schultz in theory. In the qualifying, he was uh, a third of a second quicker than the BMW. Uh, but track position is at a bit of a premium here at Alton Park. It can be tricky to overtake. Carl, though, is a hard racer and he will be looking for a way through at the earliest opportunity. And it looked as though Alan Henderson was doing much the same to uh, the uh, Matt Wallace driven Seat in third place. So they're paired off, really, haven't they? BMW ahead of Seat, scrapping over the lead. Schultz ahead of Swift. And Henderson is now third. Look in the background, the Lotus has got himself ahead of the Seat. So Alan Henderson into third place. He crosses the line of just under three seconds behind the top two but watch his lap times with interest now he should be able to reel them in and the Howarth Holmes PLC car of Andrew Howarth and Chris Boardman comes through in fifth position then it's the Mark Dry Golf now that's if we can work on it in the pit lane in the uh, in between the uh, while the red flag was out he's in sixth and then it is the uh, number 14 car in seventh place and that is the Christopher Christopher Freeman uh, machine. So we've got 83 minutes just under that left to go. The cars filtering their way up and over the line to complete uh, their what third lap now of the restarted race here at Alton Park. Steve Cheatham has just come through a long yeah. way down the order. Now he was higher up than that at the restart, wasn't he? He was just. He was. Uh, he's on my second page of the timing screen. So he's about 30 or 26th, so. 26th. Yeah, 26th. Yeah. Yeah. So a long way further back than he should be. Yeah, and he was he was right up there, wasn't he, at the at the restart? So something perhaps happened to him on the first lap or two that we, we didn't pick up. Here are the leaders once again down at his lock chicane and it's still the BMW of Andy Schultz ahead of Carl Swift in the more modern, uh, sorry, more modern Saturday and Euro Cup car in second place and we really looked determined to get through in that area motorsports car does Carl Swift but uh, so far unable to find a way through. Alan Henderson, be interesting to see if he, he's now capable of closing on them. I suspect he might be actually. Uh, we'll see, it was what, th about three seconds off the lead at the beginning of the lap. We'll see if that's come down at the end of it and then he's in turn pulling away from the, the Wallace uh, Sayat as well but it's the BMW leading. Yeah these were the three quickest cars in qualifying but not in this order it was the Sayat ahead of the Lotus ahead of the BMW so the uh, BMW that wasn't quite as quick as these two on the, in a qualifying got the best of the start and comes through once again as the race lead and the lap times though 51-0 for the leader 51-1 for Swift 50.2 for Alan Henderson. So yeah, he's the best part of a second quicker than the race leader as Luke Browse has gone off in a different place this time down at the Hislop chicane. And that car doesn't have the best steering lock in the world, does it? So he's having a bit of a hard time weaving between those plastic markers. He'll rejoin with no more damage this time, but again, lots of time being lost. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So I, I suspect he'd made his way up the order a little bit. Let's just see if we can pick up where we'd got to. He got up to 22nd before that happened. Um, so, yeah, made up a dozen or so places from uh, his position on the restart. But it's all been undone yet again. Indeed it has. There's the uh, 48 Seat that uh, was having some repair work done over the red flag period. Mark Jones, he's not yet troubling the top half of the field. Yeah, still in 30th. Yes, and uh, that car should be quicker than that, so I wonder whether maybe there's something a bit more sinister lurking underneath, maybe some steering damage or something. Leaders, though, over hilltop, and look at the way Henderson is getting closer and closer now in the Lotus. It's going to be really interesting to when these three do get themselves together because you've got three completely different cars. You've got the big, chunky rear-wheel drive GT car, essentially, in the shape of the BMW. You've got the front-wheel drive touring car in the uh, Seat, and then this mid-engine rear-wheel drive Lotus sports car in behind. Three completely different cars. They'll all make their speed in three completely different ways. And yet, over the course of a lap, in qualifying, the three of them were only a third of a second apart. So yeah. it should be a really interesting battle, this. Just worth updating on the class positions as well. Class B is being led by Mark Grice and William Beach in that golf. Number 27 in sixth place overall. And class C, uh, at the moment, it's being led by Darren Cowell. Uh, number 68 in 17th position overall in the Mazda. Yes, and his son James will take over at the pit stops. James, of course, racing in the British GT Championship this year in the, uh, the brand new Toyota, uh, which has already had its uh, first podium visit of the year. Safety car, Ian. Yes, we have the safety car boards out. The safety car's not yet left the pit lane but it will do shortly I guess it'll be waiting to, to pick up the leader which it's only just missed really hasn't it so it's, it's been quite a late call to pull out the safety car we're just trying to figure out from our, uh, our various screens that we've got on here why the safety car is there and that is the answer that's Julian McBride's car number 50 where's that Andy trying to work that out um, I want to say the run into Island Bend, possibly. It's out that end of the track, I think, up towards Island and Shell. If we zoom out, we'll see. 
and we'll probably find out it's somewhere completely different. Yeah, I think you're probably right, actually. Uh, oh, no, that's Druids, is it not? Uh, no. No, I oh, know I was right the first right time. Right the first time. Well, sort of. It was that end of the track, anyway, yeah, coming out to Shell. Yeah, Shell towards Britain, isn't it? So this has signalled a few cars to come in, yeah. which means I need to start writing <laughs> things down um, to try and keep track of this. So 14 is in, uh, 32 is in, and there's fuel going into these cars now because we've got 78 minutes to go. So it's sort of the kind of time that you'd be looking to make a pit stop. Mark Grice is in as well, so I think he's going to hand over to William Beach, got the boot up, so that's pretty where the fuel tank is uh, housed. 95, Andy Bailey is in. Uh, it'll be quicker actually to tell you who's not coming <laughs> in at this stage um, because the majority of the drivers, and I'm bound to miss some of them as I try and note them down on my sheet, uh, are going to head in here at the first sign of the safety car um, big signal. The safety car's still sitting there because it's still got to wait for quite some time to for the leaders to come back round to, to pick them up. Yeah, which is the right way to do it because it gets awfully confusing if it doesn't pick up the leader. Ivor Mares is in. Charlie Dark, by the way, going back out into the race, although that was not after a mandatory stop, of course. Number 12 is in the pit lane too, I can see. That's Tom Rogers handing over to John Griffiths in their uh, Honda Civic Type R. We're seeing on the screen there, Charlie Dark just struggling to get the BMW fired up, which it does now do. And start coasting its way down the pit lane. Carl Swift. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Rob Baker, excuse me, is getting ready. So Carl Swift should be in. I think basically in pretty much everyone is in the pit, aren't they? Um, uh, but apart from actually Carl yeah. Swift. Um, uh, no, that's, oh, that's, um, that's Wallace. No, that's Wallace. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Carl Swift has come in, hasn't he? Top yeah, three Baker are all in. Yeah. So it's the top three. It's Wallace that didn't get the memo, I don't think, uh, and hasn't come in. So I beg your pardon. But I'll oh, add that on to the list of people that have, uh, have made their stops as well. Number one staying out as well, interestingly, which is the Ben Hansi Ben Short driven car that started 31st and they were 7th at the start of the lap, so they really charged up the order. Uh, one of the golfs coming in here as well, I can see, as the Land Rover heads over to pick up the stricken BMW at the far end of the track. The golf I saw coming in is 51, which is Luke Handley, who is going solo and brings the Golf GTI in directly below our commentary position. So these pit stops all uh, have to take essentially the same amount of time. So in theory, you shouldn't gain or lose any time from speedy pit, wo pit work, but uh, you will lose time, I would have thought here, if you didn't pit. It's a free pit stop, essentially, yeah. isn't it? You get back out behind the safety car, you might not even lose I a lap, you're actually. Probably right, yeah. Three minutes, 30 mandatory stop time. So by the time you've added on getting in and out, and the cars are have to be coming at a sort of 45 degree angle and being pushed back out, such so is the tight nature of the pit lane here, and a very busy pit lane it is. Um, it, it probably takes sort of four minutes or so, I would think, to, uh, to, get, to get all of that done, four minutes that you would lose. So you probably do drop a lap, I would think, because I don't think the safety car will be quite as slow as all that. But we'll see. Um, it's now out there. It's got the Charlie Dark car behind it, actually. So after all that waiting for the, for, for the leader, um, that looks slightly scuppered by the leader pitting and uh, and Charlie Dark being released from the pit lane, but uh, but it, it's as good as we could reasonably expect in the circumstances, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, the, you, even if you do end up losing a lap here by the safety car, you're still going to lose less time than if you pitted under green. So uh, it is. A bit of a no-brainer, I'd have thought, but easy for me to say, I suppose. Sat up here in the commentary box overlooking everything. Uh, they're getting towards the end of their pit stops now. I can see just below me the 27 VW, which was the Class B running uh, car that was started by Mark Grice, now has Will Beach uh, at the wheel. That's just been released. Out also goes the number 14 Honda Civic, uh, now being driven by Jonathan Munday, the Type R. Number 32 Lotus is being wheeled backwards as well. So too the number 12 car we were following on the screens and they should all now start trickling back out or oh, the 32 car doesn't want to start and you can see the team pushing it well one team member was the other one bailed halfway through but the 32 car does now head back out onto the track and that is leon bidgeway is it not it in, is uh, yes yeah. it is going solo again so uh, yeah pit stops then being completed and we'll wait and see what the long run effect uh, this has on the uh, race order at the front well, what we don't know is how long this safety car is going to be out and if therefore there's going to be an opportunity for uh, sort of another round of stops made by drivers coming to the end of their lap behind the safety car this time round. Yes. Um, or, or if the race might get back underway again. What we could see if the car has stopped, it didn't look like it would take an awful lot of recovery work. There it is, and ah. yeah, I'm not sure this has gone entirely to plan so far by the looks of it. Um, but we will see if we can get the Julie McBride car 
to a position of safety. Now that is the car that was leading the race then, so they are not going to, well, are they? The, the pack is coming out of large quarter. I don't think that this BMW that's now being driven by Matthew Hampson is going to go a lap down, but the other two might. Rob Baker yeah. has not yet gone back out in the Cooper, he's nor has Henderson. He's being held. He's being held at the ah. end of the pit lane, number 69. You can see the marshal there, although he... No, he's not going to let him out now because the red lights are on, yeah. and that's because the safety car train is going past, and so he won't be allowed to get out until all of these cars have come past now. So close, though, to it getting was. out, and that, that could have had a huge effect, especially if only one of them had gone out on the lead lap. Oh, very close in the pit lane there. Alan Henderson almost into the back of Rob Baker uh, as they were racing. I'm not quite sure why they were racing so hard, because they both knew they'd have to stop at the end of the pit lane, but uh, there you go. And now they will get released, so out into the fray go the top three or well, they were the top three before the pit stops. Of course, now the lead has been taken by the number 10 car of Matthew Wallace, who's yet to stop. And that's Luke, well, well now Paul Browse, isn't it, in the number 22 car that had stopped again, going out of cascades and then carries on. I do hope he didn't spin on his outlap behind the safety car because that's doubly frowned it's upon. But, done. Uh, indeed, but uh, Paul has thankfully carried on. Uh, that's the third drama that car's had in the first, well, essentially 20 odd minutes of racing. Okay, um, 72 minutes left to go, around 12 minutes. The race order pretty much meaningless at the moment because we've got probably, I'd say it's only about half, of, maybe just over half of the cars have pitted so far and half haven't, but we're gonna go down to Anthony Jordan for the first time today in the pit lane. Just one or two issues, and we'll get back to Anthony very shortly. He's been uh, underemployed today in some ways because we've not been able to carry out the post race interviews as we'd hope to be able to do um, again due to different race meeting protocols this year, which uh, we haven't been made aware of. But we'll have to go down to Anthony in the pits uh, in just a moment or two. But yeah, the order of the race at the moment it's not worth telling you about because half of the drivers have pitted, half of them haven't, and um, we will wait to see if things do shake out a little bit more and indeed whether any more drivers use this safety car period as an opportunity, Andy, to, to make their start. Uh, well, yes. If they were going to, though, you'd have thought they would have done it immediately on yeah. the, the next lap around yeah. at least. So the fact that there were only one or two takers the second time around tells me that maybe they're not going to and the lights are off on the safety car, so we're going racing this time. So we're going to have this weird situation now where there are two races going on. There are half the field, as you say, who have pitted and they're a lap down now. And then there are the other half of the field who haven't, but will have to pit later on. So what they're really banking on now, the, those that haven't stopped, is that there'll be another safety car during which they can dive in and do the same thing that this uh, first group have. Right, let's try again. Down to Anthony Jordan in the pit lane. Down in the pit lane here is Andy Schultz. Andy, in the number 69. A good start to the race. I see you were leading the way before the, or after the red flag, I should say. And uh, again, safety cars just come out. We had a bit of a disaster with the uh, the Lotus leading the way now. Yeah, it's um, it's been interesting. The first start, obviously, was was red flagged. Um, I made quite a good start in that one. I was quite happy with that. I had a good fight with the Lotus for a bit, but he's obviously very nimble through the corners. Then the second restart, I got a mega start, but nobody told me that the race was reduced. So I thought it was a restart of the original race. So. I got off into the lead and I was quite happy there. I could have stayed out for a nice long run. But I came in thinking that we were sort of 40 odd minutes, 50 minutes into the race. So we do a driver swap, get Matthew out under a safety car. All good. But then they just told me it's an hour and a half race. So I, you know, yeah. Yeah, so I should have stayed out for another half an hour or so at least, you know. So it's a shame, but we haven't got the radios in the car, so I don't get that information. So I have to go on what I think. and. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong, you know. Yeah. I have to say, it seems to be one of the hard things about this circuit um, uh, so with racing, yeah. is if you don't have the comms, it, it doesn't happen as we all. We've got a BMW <laughs> just pulling in in front of us here. But yeah, another safety car that's coming out, so yeah, it seems to be a common trendsetter in this race. Yeah, it's a very tough circuit to drive. You know, you've got to be really focused here and keep your concentration levels up. And to maintain a high speed through there, you've just got to be neat and really focused. And obviously it's easy to go off, so people are. You know, it happens. Oh, excellent stuff. Well, best of luck for the rest right. of the race. Hope it went well. So that was Anthony Jordan with Andy Schultz uh, down there in the pit lane. Andy, of course, uh, front runner in the early stages of this race. We thought the safety car might be about to come in, but uh, looks like at the last minute there was a change of mind, Andy. 
Uh, yes, uh, I know not why, but that uh, has given a few more drivers the chance to come in now. The 176 uh, Brian Chandler run uh, Lotus is in and uh, this will be its mandatory pit stop then that's uh, matt pickford handing over to brian himself number 22 paul browse back out again after his little spin that he had the previous outlap and number 68 is also in the pit lane now which is the um kel uh, shared mx5 which was started by i'm trying to remind myself i want to say darren yes darren uh, so james kel taking over so uh, the race leader before the pit stop the andy schultz started and uh, uh, matt hampson um driven car now in the second stint is 20th place and the top 19 cars i think have yet to stop yeah so it's uh, still uh, quite a lot to plan out, plan out in this race really and there is always the possibility of a, another safety car we've already had a red flag and a safety car in the first hour of this race so anything ha can happen but that is what well, part of what endurance racing is all about. It's all about the strategy as well, isn't it? And a good deal of luck comes into play as well. Um, and if you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time, then, uh, then things can count against you. So we continue on here. Uh, a reminder for what it's worth that uh, it's Matthew Wallace leading the race. Colin Gillespie is leading Class B and the Hayes and Subiani BMW 318Ti, uh, driven by Paul Subiani at the moment is in class C leading the way there um, in ninth place overall but uh, uh, pit stops for them to be made yet yeah lights are out on the safety car though so we are going racing this time so the car at the front of the queue is not the race leader but the car second in the uh, line the number 10 car is that's the Seat which I thought was heading for the pit lane but it's not the uh, green flags wave once again then cross the line they go and the race is being led by Matthew Wallace and it's a real scrum for second place into Old Hall Corner the um, red and blue BMW number 21 uh, is in second place at the moment then that's Adam Howarth and then for third it was all very tight right behind him so we do have a genuine fight for the lead going on here uh, and then a lap behind essentially are the cars that have already made their pit stop we'll try and pick them up if we can it should be the uh, number 69 BMW that is leading the queue of cars that have stopped so uh, two different races going on each of them equally as tight but the overall race leaders do still owe us this pit stop yeah absolutely right it's just a question now of when they're going to make it green flags then waving all around the circuit because we are back under uh, way after the safety car period they wave all around the, the lap for a complete circuit just to make sure all the drivers are well aware that uh, the race is back on but i think they've all got that message by now uh, i can see the browse car by the way back into the pit lane for the what seems like the umpteenth time Ooh, lots of curve being taken by the number one MX-5 and it is uh, Ben Short still in that car. I think I don't think that's one of those that has pitted. Um, and so that uh, is one that is, yeah, in fourth position overall as things stand, although that's changing all the time because now Steve Cheatham in the Porsche, last year's champion, is through and ahead of that car, just now behind Colin Gillespie. A couple of drivers that were stragglers in the pit lane are now heading back out again. One of those, the 68 car, by the way, of the Kells, who were the previous Class C leaders, and the 176 car is now in the hands of Brian Chandler rather than Matthew Pickford. But on screen there in a minute, we can see the number 73 car, which is Matthew Sanders and Jack Layton, BMW 46 M3. In third place, and then the battle for fourth just behind them. The 15 car is in fourth position at the moment, I think. Yeah, that's Colin Gillespie, but Steve Cheatham, the Porsche there, the purple and yellow car, is the man on the move. He's already overtaken uh, Ben Short in the uh, blue MX-5 on this lap, and now he wants fourth place away, and he should have the horsepower across the start finish line to do it he pulls alongside the bmw of gillespie who knows that he's not really in the same fight as cheatham who has a class a car gillespie is leading class b and gillespie drops back in behind but it now means that the bmw and the mx5 gillespie and short they are one two in class b and short is having a look up the inside to take the class lead away moves through then into fourth place outright and the lead of class b yeah that's a great effort a little flick of smoke and flame from the back of that uh, that car though it has been developed somewhat from standard mx5 spec change for third as well there yeah. the first uh, yeah third place isn't it there the uh or is that a back marking car i don't think that car's actually yeah, on the lead it, lap is no, it? i don't think it is no. that is a lap down so i think that's still the same order so that's cheatham yeah. in fourth it's colin gillespie no he's ahead of gillespie isn't he so that's what so 73 is a lap down yeah isn't it? beg your pardon yeah so that's right <laughs> we're not confused not honest not at all <laughs> we know exactly what's going on uh, yeah so steve cheatham a little bit further up the road than him 
Uh, and then the lead is a little bit further up the road than that, I think, is how things are panning out. There's the Charlie Dark car. Now, that was a car that was in the pit, so that's a few laps down, isn't it? The 235 car of the one series, the, sorry, the two series, 235i. BMW, yeah, that's running in 34th. Only Julian McBride, was the car that precipitated the safety car, was uh, behind him on the order. Dear me, that was close, wasn't it? The 73 car may be a lap down, but I'm not convinced that they know they're a lap down. Matthew Sanders and Jack Layton, I think they pitted, haven't they? So it's Jack Layton uh, in the 73 car now, but that car is not racing for position with Ben Short, who's <laughs> hurling it up the inside again into Druids. You don't see many overtakes there, but Ben Short is a really good racer, and he does manage to find a way through, and Colin Gillespie now is getting stuck behind. Now, I was trying to identify which of the Seats this is. It's the number six, isn't it? So that is Rob Baker. Now, that is the first of the cars that have stopped there with his windscreen wipers on because it is starting to drizzle mm. a little bit here, I notice. Uh, that car is in the process of trying to unlap itself, yeah. essentially, uh, from those in front as the 73 car very kindly takes itself out of the equation by pitting. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't think it had made it stop, actually, that, that one, but it has what he's doing now. So, yeah, we've now got this intriguing situation. The, the Baker and Swift car, now in the hands of Rob Baker, is in 14th position overall. So it's a lap down still, but as you say, it's picking off the cars that are ahead of it, lap by lap, and there's another, well, not another one, because Charlie Dark's several laps down in his own right, the car that he's just gone past, but he's certainly making good progress here, is, is Rob Baker in the number six car to uh, to try and uh, to get back in the order. It's certainly looking pretty good stat here, actually. And Alan Henderson coming with him as well. Remember, mm. they're both on the same strategy. The White Lotus there is yeah. now the next car behind him. The question I've got then is, where is Matthew Hampson in the orange BMW? Because he was ahead of them before the pit stops, and now I think he's dropped behind. So maybe uh, Hampson, not quite as quick as Andy Schultz, as we sort of suspected, uh, hasn't uh. been able to go with the top two. Showing as 22 in 22nd position, but also with an 80-second penalty. Oh. Now, I imagine I'm going to consult my list of possible penalties here to try and work, the, work out what that is for. Um, 80 seconds is very not specific. Not making a mandatory pit stop of 3 minutes 30 seconds duration. The time penalty will be added at the end of the time of the race. One minute plus the balance of the pit stop duration not taken. So it sounds like the pit stop was 20 seconds short. Right. Okay. Um, so they get 80 seconds out of their time. So now, remember, we were saying that they were trying to beat the safety car, mm. weren't they? So maybe they reacted to the safety car coming rather than keeping an eye on the stopwatch and they ended up getting stuck at the end of the pit lane anyway. Yeah. Absolutely right. So uh, that, that has cost them dear, <laughs> all of that. It's getting a bit more blustery outside. I can see picnic blankets uh, <laughs> now uh, fluttering in the breeze and raincoats being put on, hoods being put up in the, uh, in the crowd uh, as uh, the browse car leaves the pit lane underneath us once again and goes back out into the race. Uh, just under or just over an hour left to go here very close out of my window I can see between Rob Baker and Alan Henderson so that will become all things being equal the battle for the race lead they're just going through Old Hall now but uh, it's a battle I'd like to pick up on if we can because that looks as though it's a uh, very very close scrap that's about to develop we are watching an another equally close battle though across the line there they go down his cascade so that's Paul Browse back out of the pit lane and then the two <laughs> net race leaders going past him. Well, it's getting closer as well isn't it Alan Henderson certainly reeling in now the uh, the Seat um, and these two in 14th and 15th position, you can see them towards the bottom of the timing tower if you're watching on the on the live stream. And they have only got cars ahead of them that have yet to make a stop. There's no one else, I don't think, ahead of them that somehow has lucked into uh, to a strong position. So that these drivers all need to still make a stop ahead of them in the second part of the way. So and is absolutely right. This is effectively the battle for the lead. It's heading through Britons now, climbing up towards Hilltop. Steve Cheatham is ahead of them on the road, um, but he is a lap ahead of them and has yet to make his stop, the local driver from Manchester. Yes, indeed. So uh, into the chicane we go, and now this extra dynam dynamic of the slightly changeable conditions. Does that favour the front-wheel drive cars more than the rear-wheel drive cars? Uh, sometimes that might well be the case in slightly damp and greasy conditions. Certainly the Seat is heavier, that should give it a bit more traction in slightly slipperier weather, but uh, Rob Baker is also a pretty good, uh, pretty handy peddler in the wet. Mind you, so is Alan Henderson mm. from the northeast. So he's he's uh, competed in the odd wet race, I'd imagine, over the years, uh, and he's uh, he's hammering around nicely in that Lotus, which at certain parts of the track will be quicker than the Seat. But I think out the back through the high speed stuff, that may be where Baker has an edge. It's a bit of fascinating race already. This. We've had red flags, safety cars, now rain. Uh, you know, you're getting all of the endurance race uh, boxes being ticked here, aren't you? In terms of 
the full-on experience. It's certainly authentic. Well, the 73 car that was making it stop, that's about to go out again. That was the one that we were seeing quite a lot of just after the restart because it was sort of mixed in with some of the with the, the faster machinery. That's about to go back out into the race. You can see the Ombidgeway going through in the Lotus and another of the uh, Sartre and Euro Cup cars just flying through shot now. Uh, the Porsche, that's the 76 car, new livery on Michael Downey's car uh, for this year. He was a uh, front runner in the championship uh, last year as well, finishing 11th in the points in 2019. Uh, and there, I just caught a glimpse, sorry, mm. even of uh, Matthew Hampson. So he's a long way back, isn't he, in that 69 BMW. In fact, he's just come through. Where is he? Oh, well, he's got the penalty anyway, hasn't he? But he's not even inside the top 20 yeah, overall. Still 22nd on my screen, so, yeah. Uh, Matthew Tidmarsh, I think we were just seeing there in the 81 call. Although possibly now it's Alex Richardson. Um, they have made their stop, yeah, so that'll be Alex Richardson. Just trying to do battle with the number 62 BMW uh, 318 IS. That is going to be a thing. Um, ben Woodcock's in that car. I don't think he's handed over to Andy Gate yet, uh, but I may be mistaken on that. Uh, where is that in the running order? Yeah, that's not stopped yet because it's in 13th position. So the, it's not actually a battle for position that we're seeing here. We've got cars on two different laps. Uh, both of them from Class C though. Class C still being led by the Hayes and Sibiani 318 TI BMW. Yep, up through uh, the left hander and Ireland Bend they go. The Class B ranks, it is still Ben Short ahead of Colin Gillespie, and he's still a couple of seconds clear as well. So, having shaken off the BMW, he seems able to uh, keep it at arm's length. They're still running Ooh. fourth or fifth overall. Oh dear. Very slow uh, Browse. Well, it's Paul Browse now, there, we think, isn't yes. it? Yes. Aboard that. Uh, and that is barely moving. Um, Hopefully, we'll just try and find somewhere to pull off the circuit. Um, oh, well, it's, it looks like it's fired up again now because the lights have come back on, the wipers are on. That's looking a little bit more promising, but it looks like it's just got no, uh, no drive for a few moments. Yeah, which is concerning since he's still half a lap away from the pit lane. He's got to go <laughs> uphill a couple more times as well. So uh, hopefully it gets back to the pit lane at least and they can solve the drama. Oh, speaking of drama, this is all very tight out of Lodge Corner. The 51 car is one of those cars that has pitted. That's Luke Handley's Golf. Uh, going up the inside of one of the Porsche Boxsters. You've got the 27 Golf as well. Now that car now being driven by William Beach should, when this all is said and done, be one of the leading contenders in Class B. Yeah, and that's a battle for 17th and 18th positions, well, it looks like the order between them has changed on that lap. Yes, it has. Uh, Beach now ahead of Handley. I think it was the other way around the lap before, so that's worth noting. I think they've very much winning both of those cars as well. Uh, indeed, and they've both pitted, so that was a genuine pass mm. for position as well. Yeah, so that could be crucial as we get on into the uh, later knock-ins of this race. Uh, another part in the pits as well is the is the Class B leader. Actually, I thought that had already been in. No, it obviously couldn't have been. The 26 car of um, Hayes and Sabiani, but uh, is now in. So the Class C leader, yeah, from ninth position overall, hadn't stopped, is in for its mandatory stop. So 56 minutes of the race left to go here at Alton Park. The Giwa Club Enduro Championship, round two. After the opening round at Silverstone was won by Carl Swift and Rob Baker. The Browns BMW, by the way, has made it back to the pit lane. So that's uh, that's good news. Had sufficient power to to get back here, but uh, it's not been a happy day for the Browns family. So there is the 51 car of Luke Handley, uh, one of a few drivers who have switched from Honda Civic to Volkswagen Golf for 2020. Maybe the feeling is that it's a more suitable package for the Club Enduro championship weighing up the reliability the i guess the fuel strategy and all of these things as well the switch cars this season there's number 76 uh, michael downey in the porsche boxster s the driver from haddington and he's running in eighth place at the moment with uh, him yet to make his stop and there behind him on the road is the number 12 car which i think is a further lap down yeah it is that's the rogers and griffiths honda civic type r in 21st position overall uh, yeah i remember that car being in the pit lane during yep. the safety car so again they could uh, gain in the long run although they've lost a lot of track position from their slightly earlier pit stop uh, number 10 car that's leading the way by the way matt wallace now uh, 15 seconds clear of steve cheatham who has been unlapped or if you see what i mean the the uh, rob baker car has unlocked itself from steve cheatham so it's not actually beyond the realms of possibility that those that went to lap down 
after an early pit stop, couldn't lap themselves anyway before the uh, the others start making their way in as slowly, I'd say, across the line. There went the number 25, Porsche Cayman of Darren Ball. Mm. Darren's a handy pedal. You'd expect him to go be uh, going quicker than that. Yeah, he had a retirement, unfortunately, at Silverstone relatively early on in the race a couple of weeks ago. So he's got further than that, but I wonder if there are some issues with that car, which I think is new to him for this season. Yes, more familiarly in a BMW, is he not? In yeah. Club yeah, that's what we've seen him in before. There's the Wallace car, which is still the leader on the road, goes past our commentary box window and just went through in shot indeed there. So that car has now completed 16 laps. And there, look, are Baker and Henderson now both ahead of Cheatham. So Cheatham is a lap ahead of them, essentially, but they have just unlapped themselves from the second place car. The gap between Baker and Henderson is bang on a second. It's mm. been hovering around a second, basically, since the league start. Yeah, and uh, th they are just over a lap behind Wallace, aren't they? And we know that in normal racing conditions, a pit stop will take actually the about two laps worth of, uh, of time, uh, less if there's a safety car, of course, which may prove uh, relevant as this race goes on. But uh, who, who's that? Is that the that's the Jones car that's uh, indicating to the right there? So I think that's in problems now. Uh, that's the Mark Jones Robert Taylor car. I think it's still Jones on board, but it looks like that's bound for the pit lane as well. One of the Class A machines. Yeah, they had the spin, and then we thought we saw them going slowly earlier, didn't we as well? And then they sped back up again. So. Uh, they're into the pits, we'll see what sort of work gets done, and uh, that is not their first pit lane visit, I'm afraid, of the race. And uh, we'll see if we can get a closer look, hopefully. Yes, here we go. So it's the front right corner that was damaged. And then this looks like well, we've got the fuel ready just in mm. case, but I don't think it's a stick that's going to stop yeah. us, is it? Yeah, the, the body language of the car coming into the pit lane was not that uh, all was well, was it? Although I suppose, actually, well, you still want to go into the pit lane as fast as you can, don't you? But you, there's no rush necessarily about the pit stop because you've got to take three minutes, 30, whatever. And that's been expanded this year by 30 seconds to allow more time for uh, sanitisation inside the car. 481 is in. Ed Christie to hand over to Neil Mills in the orange BMW. As back out goes the 26 car that was leading in Class C, wasn't it, so before it... Uh, came in with Jonathan Hayes now taking over from Paul Subiani. The leaders you just saw coming back through across the start finish line, all the, the uh, net race leaders uh, who are now up into 13th place overall. So the Wallace brothers still leading the race overall. Hansi and Short still leading Class B. This is all on the road, as it were. And Class C now being led by David Drinkwater and James Poulton in their BMW Compact in 10th place overall. But again, they've yet to make their stop, and it's uh, Drinkwater that started the race there so we will see different class leaders and class winners I'm fa fairly sure by the end of this race there's the 81 car again of uh, Alex Richardson Master MX-5 taken over from uh, Matthew Tidmarsh and just behind another MX-5 actually also a class C car the 18 car that's uh, Steve Dolman that started that car I don't think that's been in yet hand over to no. Paul Sherd no they're second in class at the moment yeah. and uh, but yeah as you say they've not pitted uh, Steve a long time customer of Paul's mm. in the Master MX-5 championships and uh, those two racing together Paul has been doing more and more racing actually in this kind of event recently I think he's yeah. got a real thing for uh, these sort of uh, club enduro type events and also has started taking Master MX-5 rallying which yes he has an interesting idea yeah, he has, uh, and including at the sort of Circuit Rally Championship, yeah. which features rounds here at Alton Park. Um, so, that's an uh, interesting idea. Yes. 50 minutes to go uh, in this race. There is the on-the-road leader, at least. Now, you question when the driver change is going to come from Matthew Wallace to his brother Simon. Both of these have raced in various different championships before. Uh, MR2s, and uh, I think both of them most M3s as well. Um, certainly Matthew did. Uh, it's just for the last couple of seasons that they've been racing in the Club Enduro. Staying out for at least one more lap though. This is, as I say, you can take your stop any time at all during the race. There's not a pit stop window as such in this Club Enduro. So it really is down to you. Well, and I guess if you've waited this long now, you might as well keep waiting in mm. the hope you catch another safety car. You're going to lose so much time now, uh, and you'll be well out of contention if you pit under green. So you might as well wait until the thing's on fumes, basically, and then come down the pit lane uh, if we get a 
another slightly later safety car, which is possible. We've seen a few people going off. We've seen a few people slowing down with mechanical problems. All it takes is for one of these cars to be stuck in a precarious position. The safety car uh. comes out, and all of a sudden, you more than halve your time loss. And that is why I think it's worth these cars staying out as long as they possibly can. I think you're right. I think you've got to take that uh, take that chance that there will be another safety car. Another pit, pit visitor is the uh, Andy Gay and Ben Woodcock car. Ben Woodcock at the wheel of number 62 BMW at the moment and that car was in 12th place um, before it came into the pits so making its mandatory stop just going past uh, our window now but not on screen 14th and 15th a good battle between William Beach and Luke Handley they're still right together in the VW Golf and battling away for what could well become the lead of Class B by the time everything shakes out Andy yeah and they're racing with the current Class B front runner Colin, Colin Gillespie who is second place in class losing a bit of time now though to the Ben Short driven MX5 so lots of Class B cars together there but again as has kind of become the theme of this race uh, they're all on different laps the race leader though heads down into Lodge Corner and the uh, very very good looking I must say number 10 uh, Seat Leon heads through the final turn now where you're getting your wish here this is that battle you were watching through uh, Old Hall Corner yeah absolutely so these two cars together also involved is uh, one of the Civics as well and Colin Gillespie's car is there too as you mentioned but uh, two very nicely turned out uh, VW's here pretty close together on track all of these five cars uh, very evenly matched actually although they're not all on the same lap and Gillespie running fifth overall a lap ahead of these uh, some of the others there the golfs though I think I'm right in saying Ian are the two highest placed class B cars that have mm. pitted so again this is the net battle for the class B lead yeah yep yeah, you're absolutely right yeah, there's no class B cars ahead of them that have not stopped so it looks like the first lap of a sprint race <laughs> there's five cars heading up Clay Hill fantastic stuff very even much to say another car into the pit lane as well which uh, we'll get the binoculars on. I think that's uh, the 21 car, so that's the Howarth car. So that is from third position on the road. Ah, bed shorts in as well. Okay, I will make a note of that too on my piece of paper. So Ben Short, so he's going to hand over to Ben Hansley for the last three quarters of an hour or so of the race. And so Luke Hadley there had a big think about getting up the inside of the uh, 27 car of uh, William Beach for Class B honours and the number 14 Honda Civic just behind them. Now, has that one pitted yet? I think Jonathan, Jonathan Mundy's in the 14, 14 now, isn't he? 14, yeah, I think you are right. I'll consult my list here. He is. So it's yeah. Jonathan Mundy in the Civic car uh, now. Well, they have been given a five second penalty, which uh. is a shame because otherwise they would actually, this would be a three way fight for the class lead essentially. But uh, what might a five second penalty be for, do we think? Uh, well, that could be, it could be track limits, I think. Uh, true. That is what it's most likely to be, actually, is a track limits infringement. So, reminder that uh, if you um, do exceed the track limits, and it's placed here at Alton Park by, by uh, sensors in the uh, in the curbs and uh, cameras, then the first time you'll, you'll be okay. Second time you'll be warned. Third time you get a five second penalty, then 10 seconds, then 30 seconds, and these all accumulate, uh, and then ultimately you might be black flagged. So. Uh, if, if you or your teammate but, um, you know, do that repeatedly, you, you, you could be facing a big problem. So uh, Colin Gillespie here, then second place in Class B, about to be unlapped by uh, the car that I reckon is going to take over the Class lead. That's the number 27 car of William Beach, who makes pretty short work of that. And now he's got two cars between himself uh, and uh, Luke Handley, who's not had quite the same rapid progress through the traffic. Luke is actually having to defend that uh, position now uh, from the uh, number 14 Civic of Jonathan Monday. So that was critical, that really, wasn't it, for um, William Beach. He mm -hmm. can now use the clean air to try and escape. Yeah, um, let's see if you can make that work for him. As you see on the inset, that's the 21 car of uh, uh, Andrew, Adam Howth, I should say. Um, being refuelled, it's Chris Boardman that will take over for the second part of the race. There's Luke Handley getting past the number 29 uh, car. Yeah, Luke Handley was, yeah. I think, seventh overall, wasn't he, at Silverstone? Good result that for the, uh, the Class B front runner. Mm. It's one of the Civics died for the pit lane now. Not sure what the fuck is going on by that. There's number 14, it's the other one that was uh, on a different lap to that lot. Heads down the pit lane then as the battle on track continues. Colin Gillespie trying to now get himself back ahead of uh, William Beat, which is not part of the script. Yeah, absolutely not. That's uh, not what he needs at all. 29 car has come in. That's Stephen Cunniff, so he was in fourth place overall before, but 
having not made his stop, of course. So he's now in the pit lane. There is Colin Gillespie, then, number 15, our Class B winner from Silverstone a couple of weeks ago. Um, but uh, he, I'm not sure he's going to find himself in such a strong position today after all the stops have, uh, have worked their way through in the 130i. But uh, certainly a very striking performance there uh, at the Buckinghamshire circuit. Over hill top, th those two go. We're, we've now got 44 minutes left, so we are into the second half of the second part of the race because it was a 90 minute uh, restart after the red flag. And so we're now into the second half, and maybe we might see one or two more stops of drives that haven't been made now as people start thinking actually we're a bit tight on fuel, maybe. But as you say, there's a, if you can make it work, and you can get to a, uh, a possible safety car and bank on that happening, then it might be worth a gamble. I think what we're starting to see now is people being limited maybe by fuel mileage. Mm. And people are, they, they'd love to stay out a bit longer and, and chance it, but yeah. some of the, um, especially some of the, maybe maybe things like the Seats have slightly bigger fuel tanks possibly because they're a purpose-built racing car, but all of these cars that have been uh, sort of converted from road cars, things like the Civics, for example, they may mm. well be limited on, on just how far they can run. Leon Bidgeway, number 32, into the pit lane. Now that's not scheduled because he's already been in once since this race uh, restarted. Straight into the garage as well. Yeah, so out of the race as uh, Ben Hansey in the number one car heads out onto the road or the racetrack. Yes, and they, so just to give you an idea then, the, the Class B, the lead Class B cars that are pitted, and it's the 27 car we were talking about, they are 11th place. Ben Hansey has just come out of the pit lane somewhere around 60 uh, and not quite. Well, no, I think he is a lap behind them as well, so that's the kind of time that he's lost from, uh, from pitting when he did. On screen there, you can see what we think are going to be the two leaders, and they're now up to fifth and sixth place as all the cars ahead have made their stops and as they've picked off cars themselves. And Henderson is getting really <laughs> close to the back of the back of, back of the Rob Baker Seat now, the area motorsport Seat, as they drop down towards Cascades. We'll see if we can pick them up. I think they will have gone through Cascades now and we're heading down through Island Bend any moment now and they should be there here we go and yeah there's only what three or four colleagues between them andy so we, uh, we've got a fight on for the win here i reckon well uh, like i said these two cars remember were only one one hundredth of a second mm. apart in qualifying so we thought it would be close we didn't realize it'd be quite this close they've been literally inseparable since the pit stops now there's some traffic ahead here which they're going to have to deal with that's the um, i think it's bruce robinson now in the 790 yeah. porsche boxster having made his pit stop and they're going to negotiate that hopefully over hill top and indeed they do rob baker pulled to the left hand side now is this henderson's opportunity to attack oh dear that's darren ball who has pulled off down at the chicane which means there may be yellow flags actually uh, into the next breaking zone that might scupper any chance that henderson had of making a move and ball trying to rejoin waiting for a gap in traffic which will come just behind those cars we were just talking about it's still baker in front but uh, Definitely looks like Henderson has the edge, doesn't it, through the corners, but then the Seat a bit more grunt in a straight line. Again, the fascination of this uh, huge variety of car we have on the grid. 40 minutes of the race to go, and still very much a race on. This is effectively the lead battle on the screens, these cars showing in fifth and sixth, but the four cars ahead of them, uh, the Wallaces, Steve Cheating, Colin Gillespie, Michael Downey, interestingly, three of those solo drivers, um, yet to make their pit stops. So. Uh, and they will have to do that in the next 40 minutes. They have to do that for three and a half minutes at least. Those two leading cars have gone back past our window over the line again, and they're still pretty much nose to tail. In fact, Henderson there gets a good run out of Old Hall Corner, I can see, from the window, and possibly about to challenge going down into Cascades. Watching the view of cars head out of Druids, and up to large corner, and you really do get a sense there of the undulations in the road, don't you, Andy? Yeah, every single part of this circuit, it seems, has some sort of elevation change. Even what looks like a fairly simple straight between Druids and Lodge has two or three rises and falls. It's a, a real roller coaster ride. And then right here at Lodge Corner, the, the apex of the corner, you get to the apex, you think you're on the right line, and then all of a sudden the road just plunges away underneath you, and it's so easy to understeer wide onto the uh, rumble strips. They've added these new concrete runoff areas, I noticed as well, around the circuit, which 
are not the prettiest additions to Alton Park, but they do serve, serve a purpose. If mm. you do make a bit of a mistake, you have a little more room for error now, and it does already. I've seen from a few race meetings here this weekend, it is saving people who otherwise would have spun and maybe hit the barriers. Yeah, and I guess that has another indirect benefit because as you've mentioned already on the commentary, I think the barriers here at Alton Park, if they do take a bit of a bash, they can take a bit of a rebuild as well, and uh, time is lost from uh, race meetings and indeed track days and other events here for that. So possibly all of those things together actually just make uh, make the whole experience for everybody a little bit better um, you, you still want the circuit though to be uh, challenging enough to punish drivers but let's go down to the pit lane now and hear once again from Anthony Jordan thank you Ian yes down in the pit lane garage four with uh, Andy it's um Oh, yeah, it's Adam, sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day, I'm forgetting names already. Adam, yeah, number 21 BMW, fantastic start to the race, of course. You guys just come in, did a bit stop. The fuel marshals came over, I think. They were a bit unhappy with a bit of a spillage. Yeah, we had a bit of a spillage, but it was it was all good, you know. We had fire extinguishers around it, so it was, it was all safe, you know. It's good. Yeah, excellent, good pit stop. In terms of the race, how's it going out there? Is it, is it going well for you? Yeah, it's really good, we're getting, we're getting there, we're getting slowly but surely. It got a bit slippery when it rained, but uh, it's okay. We're out there. I think we don't know where we are, but we're doing all right. I think you're around 19th place at the moment after the pit stop, so still going strong. Of course, yeah, that rain did come down. It didn't look too bad from the pit lane side of things, but from a driving point of view, yes, was it slippery? It got a bit slippery around Nickerbrook, but it was, apart from that, it was okay. Yeah, it was good. No, awesome stuff. And uh, yeah, like I say, not much long left in the race to go. Uh, of course, it was a bit of a disaster at the start, of course, with the race time going down to 90 minutes. Were the team manage, uh, able to tell you that it had dropped down in race time? Uh, no, because I haven't got a radio on mine, but it's, uh, yeah, we just kept plugging on, really. Uh, excellent stuff. Well, best of luck for the rest of the race, and cheers for talking to us. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, into the pit lane, while that was going on, has come the 176 car of Brian Chandler, so that's not a scheduled stop, because that's the second time that car's been into the pits during the course of this race. So, uh, we're getting down to the last 40 minutes. Nearly all of the drivers have now made their stops. Um, just a handful now that haven't. And I think we're all pretty comfortable that when they do, it will be Rob Baker and Carl Swift that go into the lead, but only by about half a second as things stand from uh, Alan Henderson. Uh, Rob Baker at the wheel of the Seat at the moment. Right now, you're looking at Luke Handley and also some of the Civics behind him, including the number 14, Jonathan Monday car uh, going through shots as well and uh, that sort of bunch of cars has been together for quite some time now having their own private little battles I think some of those cars are on uh, different laps certainly Handy is in 10th place overall actually Freeman is on the same lap but now has that five second penalty but yeah some of those cars involved are a lap further down Only six and a half minutes to go and I think what we're set up for here, Andy, is a grandstand finish, potentially, with uh, Rob Baker and Alan Henderson still pretty close together, although, have a, as I'm about to say, that now about two seconds apart on our timing screens. Yeah, I did notice that the, the gap had gone out that time, but I suspect that was more to do with traffic than, uh, than a bad lap for uh, Alan Henderson, so to speak. But yeah, though, it's definitely going to be a battle amongst those that pitted before the first safety car. This is the other battle I'm interested in, is the, the, the Class B scrap, although that gap has also... Uh, uh, hang on, where's the 27 car? He, He's a bit further up the road, isn't he, now? He's about, well, he should, according to the Tom screen, be about three seconds up the road. We'll see how coming out of Nicker Brook, I suppose, whether he's still there, but it did look almost as if it wasn't where it should be. No. No, it's not, is it? So, oh, no, it's, there, there. it's, it's, just, it's just a bit further up the road than we expected, yes. actually. <laughs> yeah, good lap, this one, then, from the uh, the 27 car, which looks set to in, uh, inherit the Class B lead. So I was about to say that's the other battle that could go right down to the wire, but it very much looks as though the uh, number 27 VW Golf, uh, now being driven by William Beach, is starting to assert its authority in Class B. But, yeah, the overall battle, uh, like we've said, all day long, Alan Henderson and the uh, area motorsport say at of Rob Baker and uh, Carl Swift have just been inseparable and uh, they continue to be so now throughout the race and uh, I think will continue to be so for the remaining 35 minutes. I think you are probably right as we're watching the Colin Gillespie car there that's running third at the moment on the road Ooh. and there they are they've got back together again just as we thought so up and over the line they come to complete another lap I think their 25th lap and the gap between them has gone down again to about half a second. Well, less than that, you can see visually 
was getting onto the brakes there to avoid running into the back possibly of uh, the set there was uh, Alan Henderson but they're really close now and they've got a little lot of cars ahead of them that could make life interesting yeah the uh, the Lotus is so much quicker through the middle of the corner but then the Seat accelerates away I think Henderson actually was just checking he hadn't got pad knock off there mm. as he came yeah, out because yeah. he rattled over that curb it's quite severe now they've put that concrete in it's quite a severe drop actually yeah. behind the curb if you bottom out you could uh, easily find that uh, when you get to the next corner your brakes aren't working quite as they should because the pads have been knocked away from the discs so uh, it almost sounded like I knew what I was talking about then didn't it? Uh, uh, I'm, so I'm surprised <laughs> um, anyway through the right hander at uh, the well it's not really got a name has it before Britain's and then he's going through that but they're right together is that the Wallace car that's ahead of them I think it is isn't it yeah it is so this is the car that's leading on the road and then the car that's will inherit the lead. They're pretty much together on track now, so they're almost completely unlap themselves. Uh, yes, and we were pondering whilst we were here at Manstey down in the pit lane as to why the number 10 car didn't pit when everyone else did. We thought some people may not have done because they were worried they wouldn't get to the end on that tank of fuel, but you'd have thought the fuel tank in the number 10 Seat is pretty similar, if not identical to the uh, fuel tank in the number 6. So they may well look back at this, uh, the number 10 team of Matt Wallace and Simon Wallace, the two brothers, uh, at the end of the race and, uh, and wish that they'd done it differently. But they are still on, I think, for a good result mm. uh, within Class A, even once they pit. Yeah, so up towards Lodge Corner they come and they'll know that that's a, a car that's uh, not on the same lap as them uh, you know, from that point of view up ahead. So there's the can exercise a little bit of caution here, but I guess what Rob Baker will be keen to do here is if he possibly can almost use this to his advantage and put a little bit more daylight between himself and Alan Henderson. Ooh, but Baker gets really held up there by the uh, Luke Handley VW Golf, and that means Henderson is even closer heading into Cascades, and now the number 10, the race leader, is trying to stay out of the way as well. They turn into Cascades corner, they still haven't got past him, and Henderson therefore has a chance to get the run here down the lakeside straight because these two say it's going to be side by side in front of him and uh, this then is the uh, Rob Baker car getting back onto the lead lap essentially because the number 10 car has yet to stop and actually Rob played that pretty well he could have lost a lot more time there yeah he could have done uh, and now Alan Henson just making his way through as well it's taken him a little bit longer than he would have liked to do and he's still not quite there yet so he's have gonna have to sit behind the Number 10 car at least until they get through Britain's chicane and possibly try and get back, get ahead of it um, down into uh, his lobs. But that will give, I would think, a few tenths of a second to, uh, to Baker. I guess there's now a 10 second penalty being shown for Wallace as well. So although he's going to be a lap down you know, before too much longer when he makes his pit stop, now got a 10 second penalty as well. That, well... I was going to say that's track limit, but it's gone straight from nothing to ten. Hasn't yeah, it? so I am slightly struggling as to what that could be for. It's can't be a jump start, um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. But anyway, we won't question it. It's a ten-second penalty that he's getting. Uh, yes, of course, as, as we made the point a few times, it can't be because he's not pitted within the pit window, because there is no pit window. As long as you make your mandatory pit stop for the right amount of time, then you uh, you should be fine. Yeah. So into the last half hour of this race, and still starting frustratingly, we've got three cars that have yet to pit. It's frustrating in a way because I'd like to give you a rundown on what the order is, but in some sense it doesn't make too much sense. Perhaps what we would do if we run down what the order would be if we take those three out. Um, so we think effectively it would be Rob Baker number six leading from number 90 Alan Henderson in second. And then as one comes into the pits, that's Steve Cheatham, so he's sort of solving the problem for us. It's then going to be uh, Will Beach in third place overall, I think, in the number 27 car. I think that's right now. The Freeman and Monday car is going to be fourth. Fifth is going to be Luke Handley. Sixth is going to be the Rogers and Griffiths Civic. So quite a lot of Class B cars up, up towards the sharp end here. Not that it helps them particularly because you score points within your yeah. class, but still nice to, to get up there side by side here though. Uh, no, that's the, sorry, it's the other say out confusing me because Alan Henderson has still, he has now, but it took him a, a full lap mm. longer than uh, Rob Baker to unlap himself from uh, from Matt Wallace. That's cost him two seconds, hasn't it, at least? Yes, now he should have the pace to close back in. I do think Henderson over a lap is fractionally quicker than Rob Baker. He just can't quite find a way through. And Baker himself is now getting held up a bit by the uh, 59 uh, MX-5, started by John Munro, who we didn't get much time to talk about because he handed over to Nick Dougal pretty uh, quickly in the race. John, very rapid sim racer, as well as real world racer. Sim racing becoming uh, this uh, a much bigger craze at the moment as a result of the uh, lockdown and whatnot. And I know John's been uh, 
competing in some 24-hour races online to a pretty high level. Uh, didn't get much of a stint today, unfortunately, at all parts. Just the way it worked with the safety cars. Don't yeah. know, the car goes a lap down. It does indeed. So, oh, oh, and off goes, goes <laughs> Wallace. Well, that's slightly bizarre. So it's just been passed by the by the well, uh, leaders elect, and he's gone straight on into the gravel at Druids. It's not as far as the barriers, which is excellent news because if you do get as far as the barriers, that can be quite nasty. Uh, and he'll just drive out of it and back into the race. I suspect now would be a good time to, to make a drive change. <laughs> yes, quite well. Maybe this was his in lap. That might well be what it was. But uh, well, uh, I think we can head down to the uh, pit lane now anyway and find out some more news from Anthony. Down in the pit lane, John Monroe. Uh, fantastic start to the race so far. The MX-5's looking lovely out there. How's it going for you? It's going all right. Um, the car feels really nice. It's handling well. We're, we're just a bit short of speed at the moment, which is a shame. And we're not quite sure why. We're about three, four seconds off where we were last year. Um, so we're all a bit stumped, but the car's feeling really good. And the race has gone our way in terms of strategy and stuff. So uh, some things we're happy about, some things we're not, but it's been good fun out there. Well, I say you qualified in 31st place. You're up now into 21st, so up 10 positions. It's a great start to the race still. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're making the most of the of the situation, and I think um, you know we're still looking good for maybe a top four today, which would be lovely. Good championship points as well. Obviously, we're out here. We you know we want to try and win, um, which is obviously everyone's aim. But you know, it's, it, we're making as much as we can of this current situation. And as I said, the, the racing out there has been really good. It's been hard. We've got another MX-5 right next to us, who's very similarly paced. Um, so we're having a great battle with them, as we did at Silverstone. So um, yeah, overall, you can't really argue with how we're doing. I think I think we're doing the best job we can. And, and as I say, it's good fun. Uh, excellent. Of course, the start of this race was a bit, of, a bit of drama. We had the red flag, of course. We've had several safety cars. What was the strategy? Did it go all down the pan when those safety cars came out? Yeah, we're a bit unsure, really, because there's not really been a red flag in Club Enduro, at least that I can remember. So we weren't really sure how the pit stops worked and whether if anyone had got in the pits in time, whether it would count or not. So we were just kind of trying to keep in touch. I was keeping in touch with these guys uh, in the pits as well. Um, but basically, the strategy stayed the same. It was if we get a chance under a safety car, we'll come in and pit regardless, because I think it's worth the, the time gain to pit under a safety car no matter what the situation. So it didn't really change too much for us, to be honest. Uh, and obviously, the main thing is driver's OK. And it seemed like even though it was a nasty shunt, uh, everyone turned out OK. Okay, so that, that's all good. Uh, excellent stuff. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. Best of luck for the rest of the race. Have a good weekend. Thanks very much. Enjoy yourself. Cheers. The, uh, the Hot Badger Motorsport team. And again, it's a three and a half minute stop, so it looks like the work is not particularly feverish, but it doesn't need to be. There's plenty of time to, to, to do what's required in a, a reasonably relaxed way and without the risk of uh, causing problems or making mistakes. I guess they'll just check that car over and possibly trying to get some gravel out of it now after its uh, excursion at Druids. Yeah, that gravel gets everywhere, doesn't it, when uh, when you uh, bounce through the gravel trap. So this now does become, properly, yep. the race for the lead then between Rob Baker in the Seat and Alan Henderson in the Lotus. Now, I wonder if there's any advantage here to Rob Baker being a bit fresher, because remember, Alan Henderson's doing the full uh, 90 minutes now, essentially, on his own, whereas Rob Baker has uh, taken over from Carl Swift. Rob will be happy because he's getting a bit more seat time than he did at uh, Silverstone last time out, but uh, Alan Henderson has been pounding around out there for quite a while. And it's a physical circuit, this as well, especially in a car like that, which carries so much mid-corner speed. Mm. Uh, Alan is fit and healthy and a good racing driver, as we've said, but not done a huge amount of endurance racing until very recent years. So uh, we might just start to be feeding this into the, uh, the final half now. Yeah, as you say, quite a physical lap here at Alton Park. As we watch them head down to Island Bend, there's the 10 car about to go back out into the race again. After an eventful first stint, almost going to be side by side for the lead of the race though, up at Shallow's Corner. 
and it is going to be just the Seat that holds on, but Alan Henderson's going to have another go here, trying to position his car on the right-hand side of the circuit, but that would be the wrong side, really, for the left-right left of uh, Britons, which is not really an overtaking opportunity, but Alan Henderson certainly showing some intent. So frustrating, though, isn't it? He can draw alongside, but then the Seat just powers ahead yeah. again on the throttle. It's, it's great racing for us, but Henderson knows he's quicker on, on two or three occasions he's dropped back because of traffic or making a mistake or whatever uh, to maybe a couple of seconds behind Rob Baker and each time he's been able to close in pretty rapidly only to get stuck on the rear bumper of the area motorsport Seat which again powers away from the Lotus up and over Clay Hill but if we follow them through Druids you'll be able to really see the you can tell just from the attitude of the cars the extra speed mm. that the uh, little Lotus takes through the corners can see closes right back in he's almost there he's within striking distance and then the Seat just creeps away again I think if this move is going to get made traffic will have to play a part he has to slow that Seat down Seat down enough on the straights oh this might be the chance actually the Porsche stays out of the way and Rob Baker hangs on but I do think traffic might be his best opportunity yeah could well be they go over the line start another lap with 31 laps now in the book, 23 minutes to go, so they'll probably get another 12, maybe 13 laps out of this, looking at the lap times that they're doing. It's be something like a 45 lap race, as Colin Gillespie goes back out into the race, but really nothing to choose between these two as they go through Cascades, along past the picturesque lakeside here at Alton Park, and they sweep into the left-hander at Island and on towards the right-hand hairpin at Shallow's Corner. Three back markers to deal with, one of them being dealt with already in the shape of the BMW. A couple more that they'll get probably just after Britons, I would think. Uh, one of the MX-5s, one of the Civics. Will this be the opportunity that uh, Alan Henderson's looking for? We'll see. Climbing up and over to... Uh, uh, they're battling with each other as well, which... Uh, adds another dimension to it. Do they know that the leaders are coming? They've, you've got Carl, uh, sorry, Rob Baker going down the inside of the Mazda and indeed uh, has put him a car between himself and Alan Henderson now. And they are going to climb up the hill. Henderson will get past the Mazda as Baker gets past the Civic. So they've both still got a car between them, Andy. Yeah, this is the Civic of Andy Bailey and the MX-5 of James Kell. They're fighting for position, 17th place overall and third in Class C, so it's a significant battle, that, and therefore they're not really that willing to leap out of the way of the overall race leaders, and, and you're right, that's definitely helped Rob Baker more than it's helped uh, Alan Henderson, but yeah, that's quite a significant scrap going on there. Bailey is in front, but uh, James Kell in the car that uh, he has raced uh, on a number of occasions in Master X5 Championships, and Steve Cheatham has a spin. Now, Steve, having pitted, had come back out in fifth place, so he was on for a good result, mm. but he loses a place at least there to Luke Handy, and therefore another one you'd imagine to the Howards. Yeah, that car must have gone through as well, so that's a disappointment for him. It'll be down to a think about seventh place after all of that so just over 20 minutes to go it's probably worth giving you a rundown on things on the screen as they stand although with the proviso that we've just seen uh, Steve Cheatham lose a couple of positions we reckon but at the end of the last lap it was Rob Baker leading only a second clear of Alan Henson so six from 90 third is the class B leader number 27 that's William Beach fourth number 14 that is the uh, Christopher Freeman Honda Civic Type R second in class B fifth number 21 uh, as it, well, it's now Chris Boardman in that car, having taken over from Adam Howarth. Sixth, number 51, Luke Handley, third in Class B. Seventh, number 43, Steve Cheatham. Uh, eighth, number 73, that's the Sanders and Leighton E46 M3. Ninth is the Simon Wallace um, Southland Euro Cup car, the one that was leading on the road for much of the race. Tenth is number 12, the Rogers and Griffiths Civic Type R. Then eleventh is number 17, which is David Drinkwater and James Paulson. I've not actually noted that as having been in the pits, but I imagine it must have been by now. It's just, just going past our commentary box window, in actual fact. Uh, that's the Class C leading car. That's uh, Drinkwater and Paulson. And they are ahead in 12th place of the uh, Sherd and Dolman Master MX-5 Mark IV. As the race leaders in traffic again get closer together, heading down into uh, Lodge Corner. Rob Bacon for the... 
Bacon, Rob Baker, uh, he's defending to the inside line and Alan Henderson just drives around the outside of him. Well, that came out of nowhere. Fantastic stuff from Alan Henderson. Now, can Rob Baker fight back with that extra straight line speed of the Seat? He pulls alongside into Old Hall corner. Can't quite get his nose in front though. And if Henderson gets out of Old Hall in front, that might just be enough for him to hang on. So the Lotus has gone through uh, with an opportunistic move. I said that traffic might have a part to play. It held Baker up through a part of the circuit where he has traditionally been strong. And that was enough to put Henderson closest enough to go through but I didn't expect it to go around the outside at Lawrence that was a great move it was very good indeed and as you say caught us a little bit by surprise really but well done Alan Henderson now the question is can he turn this lead into victory he's got 20 minutes to go there'll be a lot more traffic that they both need to get into negotiate between now and the end of the race of course and that could work out either way for them but now it's Henderson that's going to be coming across the traffic first which isn't always what you want to be doing it depends how well the, the marshals are doing their, their job with the blue flags and uh, it's tough uh, doing that in an endurance race such as this. For example, you might have expected to see a blue flag there and blue flag there was none, but they're heading down the uh, straight towards the Hislop Chicane. They've got the Browns BMW that's been in the walls in this race. They both negotiate that. So certainly Rob Baker is not letting Henderson make a break here. No, and again, Exactly as we said, when it was Henderson on the attack, if a back marker gets in the way of Henderson through a, a fast corner where he normally would gap the mm. Seat, uh, then all of a sudden that might allow Baker to close back in again. And that's Ivan Mares in the 316 MX5, who just about stays out of the way of the new race leader, then Alan Henderson, who heads out of uh, Druid's corner in front. So Henderson with the lead now, then Rob Baker down into second place third place is the class b leading vw golf a fantastic performance this from william beach and mark grice beach at the wheel now in class b and uh, what about that class c scrap that was going on earlier on still james kell ahead of in fact james kell is now ahead of andy bailey so we've had a change for that third place in class c as well so there are podium battles still going on in all three classes as we move into the final 20 minutes. They're going through short. You can see the car in third place, 27, William Beach. And is that the... Uh, we'll try and work out which car that was immediately behind them. It was looking a little bit smoky. Yeah, that was Chris Borman in the uh, okay. fourth place car. OK, so well that's, he's made up a lot of ground on this lap then because he was eight seconds behind at the start of it. But the car looks somewhat um, rearranged uh, on the front. 1.2 seconds now between them so what's gone on, on that last lap let's have a look at the times it is 156 uh, 158 for beach two seconds off his best of 152 for Borden. three seconds off the best for that car but he's definitely taken a bite out of something hasn't he so yeah. uh, i would ordinarily do we have uh, i know there's no tire stacks on the road down at his lot he's going through anyway he'll be inside so into third place class a car ahead of class b so it makes little difference really to uh, the William Beach car because that car is still leading its class uh, but uh, yeah I wonder if he's clipped one of the tyre stacks maybe up at Britain's because it is the front right corner that's mm. dragging might that even uh, catch the attention of the clerk of the course because uh, we've seen cars with less damage than that sometimes be pulled into the pit lane with a mechanical warning flag yeah we'll keep an eye out for that but certainly quite a bit of damage on the front end of that car and I guess the question is is there anything in imminent danger of falling off I'm not, uh, and sort of flying off into the path of another car. That's the, probably the key question. I'm not quite sure what the answer to that is. I mean, that, that, the way that front splitter is sort of dragging underneath the car is not particularly clever to me, but uh, nevertheless, it doesn't appear to be impacting the pace too adversely on the basis that he's now got through into third position on the road and down to fourth position on the road. He's got the Class B leader, 27, William Beach. Yep, second in Class B is still the number 14 car with this 10-second uh, penalty, which... Uh, is the Jonathan Monday driven Honda Civic that started 17th and he's fifth place overall uh, but will lose that place to Steve Cheatham I think uh, as a result of the penalty although Cheatham is a class A car so again matters little in a way 95 coming through there just ahead of the uh, 27 car that car is Andy Bailey who was dicing away with James Kell earlier on but Kell has gained another place now ahead of the David Drinkwater car, which I was in the pit lane, that's why. So James Kell has now moved into the lead of Class C. Yeah, so that must be the mandatory stop for David Drinkwater. And I didn't think he'd been in the pits, but uh, I don't reckon he has been. So I think that's the mandatory stop that, uh, that they're serving there, effectively. That would make sense. So uh, James Kell there takes the Class lead. He's now nine seconds clear 
of the 95 Civic Van. He made it, which you saw there is James Kell, right on cue, about to be lapped by the overall third place car, and James Kell sharing with his father, Darren. And uh, that car had a fairly sizable shunt to Brands Hatch at the start of last year, not racing in Club Enduro, but uh, they've repaired it. They've fitted a roof now onto it as well, and uh, that makes it a little bit more aerodynamic, probably a bit more comfortable for an endurance race as well and uh, it is still uh, running extremely strongly, looking odds on favourites now for the Class C victory. And I forget that they pitted during the safety car, I think, didn't they? So I think all three of our class leaders are going to have benefited mm. from a, a, a timely pit stop. Yeah, uh, it just shows the importance of strategy, doesn't it? Uh, and being alive to those situations. Equally, though, I think some will have just gambled on there being another safety car at some point in the race. And that's not necessarily a daft gamble around Alton Park. It's a challenging circuit. People do threat at the scenery from time to time, as we've seen. Um, but actually, since the early red flag and the, the safety car, it's been relatively incident-free, he said, touching wood. <laughs> I'd have thought you'd have learnt over the years here not to say things like that. Well, I, I just, I like to experiment every now and then, <laughs> just just to see what might happen. No, they've, they've been behaving themselves remarkably well, despite some very close racing. And, and of course, a, a, quite a wide variety of, of experience out mm. there as well. There are some drivers that have been doing this for a long time, but there are equally some drivers who might be making their first steps into motorsport. That is the great appeal of the Tegiwa Club Enduro Championship, is that it is a great entry-level way of getting into motorsport, especially if you're spreading the cost between you and another driver, yeah. relatively affordable car, easy to maintain, and uh, so it does attract drivers with uh, lots or little experience. Yeah, absolutely right. So we're now in a situation whereby the only two drivers on the lead lap are Henderson and Baker, aren't they? Um, because how a third place car has gone through and he's a lap down now in car 21. That is the car though that has the best lap of the race, the Howarth and, uh, and Boardman car, which is being driven by Chris Boardman now. 149.48 as the best lap of the race, which we think is a lap record. I think it was in the 152s, wasn't it, before the uh, lap record for Class 8? It was a 152.91 oh, yes. for Andy Marston. So that will be the lap record. There is one MX-5 passing another. And that's Ivan Mayer's being passed by number 68. The class leading car of James Kell, 14th position overall. And he has the advantage over second place in that class, which is Andy Bailey. Uh, and Andy Bailey won class C last time out at Silverstone. So m winners being mixed up here in class C and class B, and even potentially class A, but it looks because Alan Henson is um, getting away, if anything, from uh, from Rob Baker. What's the gap now? 4.4 seconds, only 12 and a half minutes to go. Yeah, I kind of thought that might be the case. Henson did look quicker, just uh, just couldn't find a way through. One battle I'd like to have a look at, if we can, is the one for fifth place, because Steve Cheatham, having had that spin earlier on, hasn't had quite the same pace ever since. He's now being reeled in by another Class A car, so that would be significant for championship points. It's the uh, 73 car, Matt Sanders and Jack Layton, who's now at the wheel. They started in down in 25th place, and they are now only a second away from getting into the top five. There they are, right on cue. So the BMW that was on this slightly alternate strategy, wasn't mm. it? They were one of those that stayed out longer. And there you can see the next car up the road, the blue and yellow Porsche, is Steve Cheetham. And the next car in front of them is the Class B leading, fourth place overall, number 27 of William Beach. So we've got three cars together just behind James Kell's green Mazda yeah. that are fourth, fifth, and sixth overall. I mean, unsurprisingly, as it's a Class A car, it's much quicker than the the Golf, but it's also on best lap time, 1 1.3, 1.4 seconds faster than Steve Cheatham as well. So it's not surprising, therefore, that uh, he is catching. Cheatham, I just saw before we cut away, went past um, the 27 car, so he isn't a fourth place, puts a car between himself and the um, okay. uh, the car behind of uh, Jack Layton, but uh, Layton is, as you were saying, the quicker of the three. Yeah, Michael Downey there. 76, 17th position, having made his pit stop now in the Porsche Boxster, just uh, in behind the number 12 Honda Civic, which is being driven now by uh, by John Griffiths. That's the last 11 minutes of the race here at Alton Park, two hour Tegiwa Club Enduro race, although restarted only over 90 minutes after uh, an incident, a roll for Zade Wotton, wasn't it, in the um, say out loud, Euro Cup car in the first part of the race. Jack Layton now got himself ahead of William Beach, so they've both got past the Class B car, uh, but the gap between the Porsche and the BMW is the significant one as far as class positions are concerned. Yeah, and 
over the line. You can see a variety of cars coming. The last of those cars in that little group was the number 59 uh, MX-5 with uh, Nick Newt Dougal out the wheel. We heard from uh, John Munro uh, a little bit earlier on, the TWP car. Ah, into the pits has come number 21 now from third place. That is the Chris Boardman car. And that is the car that had damage on the front right corner where we thought maybe the collision was one of the tyre stacks. So if they are just doing a bit of running repairs on this, it doesn't need to be a three and a half minute stop. It's only for the mandatory stop and only if refuelling is being done. If it's not the mandatory stop, does it need to be over three and a half minutes? Otherwise, uh, in and out as quickly as you can. It's proven costly already though because Steve Cheatham's gone through into third, Jack Layton's gone through into fourth place, into fifth has gone uh, Will Beach, so they've, they've already fallen off the podium. But yeah, they're just going to take the, all the front body work off and send it back on its own. Just that one bit of tape will do, I think. <laughs> uh, that's all that's required, um, uh, and that'll do the job. And uh, out into the race uh, goes the number 21 car, Chris Boardman, then probably loses about a minute, I would think, uh, because of all of that. So half a lap, roughly. There is the number 10 car, that's Simon Wallace now aboard. He's running in ninth place, he's got a 10 second penalty to be added to his time at the end. I'm not sure that will particularly cost him any positions as things stand. Um, but uh, yeah, ninth place having been leading on the road that car for, for quite some time. Watching the view down uh, down the avenue towards the left hand of Cascade at the bottom of the hill. And they're just flashing through shots as well, you can see the cars heading down into his lops as well. There's uh, Nick Dougal again, the TWP, Together We Progress car. New colour scheme, white and grey. Very smartly turned out machine for this season. As across the line and past our window again is the 69 car. That's the Hampson BMW that was started by Andy Schultz and uh, was going so well in the early part of the race. But it, it's a car that's well down the order and has this 80 second penalty as well now. So isn't really going to feature anywhere. Of course, an 80 second penalty in an endurance race, well, it can only drop you as far back as the last car on that lap. It can't drop you back another lap, uh, as it were. So actually an 80 second penalty may only equate to a much smaller penalty depending where you are on the lap. Now, Steve Cheatham has got the 73 car right behind him. Now, those two are just going into uh, Old Hall Corner, and that is a battle for position. And Steve Cheatham holds on to third place at the moment. That's just going on past our window as well and through into Old Hall Corner. So the 73 car uh, of uh, Leighton right behind Steve Cheatham there in the number 43. Various other scraps coming through now with seven and a half minutes of the race left to go. Here at Alton Park, the Tagiwa Club Enduro Championship. There's the number 10 machine going through as the sun now beaming down here at Alton Park this afternoon. We've had rain during the course of the race but now the sun's out again and uh, we're on course for a conclusion which should go the way of Alan Henderson because he's six and three quarter seconds clear of the rest of the field just at the moment. I can see from peeking, well two things I've just seen from peeking over the shoulder of Luke, our producer. Uh, one, the 73 car got through past uh, Steve Cheatham. The other, we've got an expired Porsche on the running to Lodge Corner that has just blown an engine fairly spectacularly. There it is on the main screen now. That's Bruce Robinson in the Porsche Boxster 790. He was running in 11th place overall uh, and inside the top half dozen in Class B. Well, that car, just as it turned into Druids, suddenly went up in a huge ball of smoke. Now with six and a half minutes to go, I'm hoping they won't need a safety car here to clear this up. They might just cover it under yellows, but uh, oh, ah, that, on the <laughs> other hand, might require a safety car. That's 48, which is uh, Robert Taylor. Now, that car has already been in the wars once in this race, before the red flag, and now it's just popped on the edge of the circuit. That's what, Clay Hill, I think, yes, isn't it? Is. Yeah, it is Clay Hill, and he's right on the edge of the track there, and that's not in a great position. So we'll see what happens with that one. As we've got cars coming through, there's Steve Cheatham, and he is now behind the, the Leighton car. So Leighton up into third place, Steve Cheatham down to fourth. Yep, so that happened. Just going into Island Bend, the BMW got the run down the lakeside straight and took the inside line into the quick left-hander, moved through. Uh, what about those class battles we were watching earlier on? Well, uh, as we see the uh, 790 car of uh, Bruce Robinson pulling, uh, pulled off. Bruce Robinson, I'm guessing this is the same Bruce Robinson that I see racing frequently, again, in Mazda MX-5s, is it not? Uh, uh, 
Uh, could well be. I mean, I'm not sure how many Bruce Robinsons there are out there that possess a, a race <laughs> license. But <laughs> well, it's always a white and orange car, and it's usually number 90, which is why I'm kind of putting two and together. Okay. And hoping well, I'm okay. Cool. I think I think it's fairly safe. Uh, well, uh, that car sadly is going no further. It looks like he's worried there might be a bit of uh, fire at the back, and uh, so the extinguisher being used there, and uh, that sadly is very much the end of their race. Yeah. <laughs> and the end of our view. Still, the 48 car is in exactly the same place as it was on the exit of, well, Nickerbrook and partway up Clay Hill on the right-hand side of the circuit. It's not particularly on the racing line, but it's sort of one wheel on the circuit, isn't it? Yeah. Well I think the driver will still be in the car as well. Yeah, brake lights are still on, aren't yeah, they? So he's yeah. holding it on the brake. He's probably thinking, well, any moment now, they'll throw a safety car and come and pick me up, but uh, that hasn't yet happened. And they're throwing a checkered flag early, I believe. I can yeah. see a checkered flag being waved Yeah, the checkered flag is out, I can see. Uh, that's probably the, the right call because, yeah, I can see it on the finish line as well. We could see it on the repeater flag just out of our window. Um, so checkered flag goes out. There you see it on the screen as well. It's gone out about, what was it, five, four minutes early, four and a half minutes early uh, because of the various issues. A couple of cars stopped at different points around the circuit. So it's a little bit of a, a messy end to what's been a messy race, really, for the Tequila Club Enduro uh, Championship. No one's fault particularly, um, but uh, just the circumstances that we've had today. So the win, then, will go to Alan Henderson. I don't think there's much doubt about that because it was 11 seconds clear. So even if we roll back a lap or anything or like that, which I don't think we would because it's checking off on a red flag, uh, Alan Henderson gets the win. And I think that's a fair result because I think he's driven really well there. Number 90, Alan Henderson takes the win. Then second place to number six, which is Rob Baker in third place. Uh, number 73, uh, Jack Layton. Fourth to number 43, Steve Cheatham. Fifth and winning class B, number 27, William Beach. Sixth, number 21, despite that uh, that late pit stop, uh, Chris Boardman. Seventh, number 14, that is going to be uh, Jonathan Monday. Um, eighth to number 51, Luke Handley. Ninth to number 10, Matthew Wallace. And tenth, I think, is going to go with way of number 12, uh, John Griffiths. I've given the name of the finishing driver there in each case, not necessarily the first driver. Uh, and class C... Um, that's going to go the way of, uh, of James Cowell, uh, who took over from his father, Darren. Uh, 13th position overall uh, for them. So a little bit of a strange end to that one, Andy. Uh, yeah, shame, really, because we'd had some good racing. But I think the class victories had pretty much been settled by that point. And yeah, I second your thoughts. Alan Henderson, a well-deserving victor, did the entire race on his own, never put a foot wrong and never let Rob Baker and Carl Swift off the hook, did he? He was right behind them before the safety car, right behind uh, Rob Baker throughout most of the second half of the race and uh, eventually was able to force the mistake or, or gain an advantage in traffic to uh, to get the lead away. So congratulations to Alan Henderson, one of many drivers who uh, have Master MX5 racing experience, including Bruce Robinson. I've had it confirmed <laughs> to me now by fellow commentator Scott Woodward, who's watching from home. It is the same Bruce Robinson, okay. uh, who uh, sadly has uh, had uh, his Porsche not quite get to the end of the race in one piece. Indeed. So, uh, as the cars head into Park Firm at the end of the race, uh, we'll see if in a moment we're able to bring you results uh, classification from that. And uh, we'll give you a rundown on that. Still four more races to come, by the way, here today at uh, Alton Park. Uh, all of them 15 or 20 minute sprint races to, to round things off. So, let's have a look at the results then. There we go. And it was number 90, Alan Henderson, that took the victory. 85 minutes in the end of the race, 41 laps completed. Second, Rob Baker and Carl Swift, 11 seconds behind. Then a lap down in third place, number 73, the Sanders and Leighton BMW, 40 laps completed by them. Fourth place, number 40, uh, 43, I should say, Steve Cheatham in the Porsche Boxster. Fifth to number 27, William Beach and Mark Grice in the Golf. Sixth to number 21, the Adam Howarth and Chris Boardman BMW. Seventh to number 14, Chris Freeman and Jonathan Munday in the uh, Honda. Eighth to number 51, Luke Handley in the Golf. Ninth to number 10, Matthew and Simon Wallace in the Sao Leon Euro Cup car. Tenth to number 12, the Rogers and Griffiths Civic. Then uh, Hampson. And Schultz in the BMW E46 M4, though I think we may need to apply the penalties to their time. But 12th to number 28, Simon Lake in the Class B Lotus Elise. A bit further back down the order, the Class C winner next up, number 13, uh, James Kell with Darren Kell. Uh, 14th, number 15, Colin Gillespie. 15th, number 95, Andy Bailey, who was second in Class C as well. Third, number 76, Michael Downey. Fourth to number, four, sorry, 
sorry, 16th number 76, Michael Downey. 17th number one, Ben Hansen, Ben Short in the Mazda MX-5. Then another one, Mazda MX-5 in 18th place. The 81 car of Tidmarsh and Richardson. 19th to number 59, the third place car in Class C, the Nick Dougal and John Munro MX-5. And then 20th, Stephen Cuniff in the Civic. Then Ivan Mayers, uh, the Christie and Mills uh, BMW. The Burgeon Robinson Porsche, which we saw possibly uh, not going to be included in the final classification, having uh, had that configuration at the end. And then the Shirt and Dorman Mazda MX-5 Mark IV. Those are the top 24 cars. Oh, there we go, Alan. Well done. What a fantastic race that was. It looked a bit... Uh, looked like a bit of a tough race at the start. Of course, we had red flags and uh, safety cars coming out left, right and centre, but it looks like we got away with that one. Yeah, it was... Uh, I mean, it's quite clear to see we haven't got the straight line speed, but we've got it in the corners. Uh, oh, let's get this off. How's it here? Oh, yeah, we've got the straight, we haven't got any straight line speed, we've got it in the corners, and it was just kind of... Just trying to get everything to work out for when it was well, the safety car didn't help initially. I had the red flag, sorry, on the restart. I knew I'd get monstered again. Uh, yeah, just got back up to the, the leader there, worked back through the traffic with the, everybody pit at the different times. We were quite a way back and just tried to keep putting decent laps in. Uh, yeah, got there in the end. Nice move around the outside in the last corner as well. <laughs> no, it's fantastic stuff. Well, as you were saying, yeah, it looked like you were struggling a bit on the straights with obviously with the top end, but of course with a car like a Lotus Elise, you can really chuck it into the corners. And I think, as you say, that's how that's how that race came to be. Nearer the end, obviously, it was a uh, great seeing you just claw down that gap, closing up. But uh, yeah, it looked like a fantastic race. Yeah, it was. Thank you very much. Spot on. Cheers.